Hello and welcome to Achievement Hunting 101. I'm Fufu Kalipoof, and this is level 227. Joining me tonight is Big L. Why, hello. That's not an Iron Man Koosh cup. Moose. Greetings no. and salutations for the first time tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no mistakes have been made. And None. Maychart. Hello. This has been flawless. Welcome I'm back. glad you guys Welcome have perfected back. your technique in the time that I have been recording with you. Well, I mean, we've done 226 of these things. You think we will be professionals by now? This mm. is episode 227. Check Check <laughs> Ah, oh, you did figure it out. Kenny, the go uh, go go to the bing. Two two seven. I was <laughs> they could just tear out and tell by my blank stare. I had no idea what they were talking about. He still won't. I've been two, waiting two, for this seven. episode. Oh, I, I, he's... TV show. He might have to look up TV show as well. Uh, I'm assuming this is. It's a. Uh, oh, I got it. IMDb thing. I have no idea what any of this is. I have never seen this before. Well, there's your homework. Go watch yeah, some 227. Yes. Now, wait, wait. This wonderful Actually, show. speaking of homework, while I wasn't here, I, I understand from listening last week, Uh-oh. I was to prepare for a pizza quiz. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always. I mean, is this hey, ready? Kenny. Kenny was supposed to give us a pizza quiz. You promised. I was? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were going to give Got out it. trophies. Lots of them. Uh, we'll edit that in later. I, have no <laughs> idea I'm down. I vaguely remembered having that conversation. <laughs> I'm down. I just wanted to prove I listened. That's Pepperoni. All. Ding. There's somebody remind me in one week <laughs> to do a pizza quiz. <laughs> just, just set a reminder for yourself. An or ultra in, pizza quiz. In the yeah. podcast room right now with no other context. That's actually a great idea. I will do that. This 227 came out. Six years before I was born. Yeah. So have you seen it? So that's 30. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> it's 30 years after Nate was born. Uh, 1978. Oh. Yeah. I think the math. Uh, once uh, again, not a math podcast. Everyone. Not a math podcast. 1987. Very. All right. <laughs> We're not talking about these old comedy TV shows. We're talking about video games this week. So let's get into our topic of discussion. And this week's question comes from Chewy on Ice. This question is, in honor of our Euro boosting group and Mario, finally all getting seriously in Gears 1 after two years of weekly boosting, what's the one achievement you've put the most time and effort into but haven't yet unlocked? What does it involve? Are you still actively trying for it? Do you think you'll realistically ever earn it? And what do you expect it might it happen and then after all when it is said and done do you think it'll be worth it so i'm going to start it off i want to read patron responses from holiday big balls barry damn he says <laughs> i can't say the script. can't say big balls on this show why not i'm ron burgundy <laughs> Hey, he's putting his Christmas <laughs> name in. I'm going to read it. By the way, everybody change your name in the Discord to something oh, holiday f- festive. L loves it. Especially <laughs> loves it. <Yes. laughs> and everybody gets, oh no. Uh, if for no other reason, do it for L. Show your love and affection up for L and change your name to something holiday. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Big Balls Berry. <sighs> oh, that. Mm. Uh, he says seriously 3.0 in Gears 3 <laughs> I have all the campaign stuff done a lot of the arcade mode all of horde mode and most of beast mode done I still need a bazillion games played in different modes and I need a jabillion kills with all the weapons I get motivated about once a year and work on it I don't know if I'll ever get it because there are so many other games I'd rather play, but if I did unlock it, I would feel pretty good unlocking this very grindy achievement. And then like likewise, while West08 said I am with Hawkeye on seriously 3.0, I start doing a few things a couple times a year, a couple times in the year, then move on. I doubt I will ever get this as I have too many games to play. Now 
I've played through the Gears games. I understand that all the seriously achievements are the absolute worst. I remember looking at them and seeing what it takes to do them. I by no means do I ever want to try any of them outside of maybe, maybe seriously one, just because that seems to be the easiest. Well, no. now seriously two is the Gears easiest three one. It's. Because the only one that doesn't require, yeah, because seriously, two um, is one hundred thousand any kills. So there's a stage late in the game where you're riding on a okay. broomac and you get a whole bunch of just grunt kills, and you can just let that run. So that one's far and away the easiest. But of the ones that require actual multiplayer interaction, seriously, one is is the least involved for sure. Okay, that's more more or less what I was thinking. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I have never gone for these things, so it just seemed like having the least amount of multiplayer is Mm -hmm. makes it you know that much better because you don't have to rely on anybody else well one is all multiplayer that's the one that chewy and his group just did so what that entails is you just all uh three versus three you meet in the middle and you grenade tag each other and both of you get credit for the kill Mm -hmm. and you do that a lot of times (laughs) that sounds amazing at least ten thousand. right Exactly. The at least 10,000 is the important part because there's definitely some missing in the counting. So nobody actually unlocks it at 10,000. So I still remember very distinctly that for me it was 12,005 kills. And and people don't know. Oh my gosh. Yeah. People don't know why it loses some of your kills. It could be that, you know, if a match doesn't end, maybe it doesn't count in that instance. Or if you get a kill in a certain way or whatever, nobody really knows. So once you hit 10,000, that just means the timer has started for, for it could be any time now. But you really don't know exactly Ugh, when it could be. That's so discouraging. I think that's and why people who do seriously want worse, to have such camaraderie about it. I was going to say, I even, see that. even worse is that I believe Chewie said, or Mario said, the leaderboards don't even work anymore. So you don't even know how many kills you have at all. Ugh. So you just keep going until it pops. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's even worse now. Correct me if I'm See, wrong, I can, guys, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I can completely understand your point about the camaraderie about it because, I mean, how many people did Titanfall bring to, bring together? Mm-hmm. That's such a memorable boost for a multitude of reasons, but if no other reason, you know, it got us a bunch of friendships. Well, but at least the Titanfall boost has variety. You know, you're going for different weapons, you're playing on different maps. The Seriously boost is the same this map with the same technique for hours and hours and hours. And there's just a sort of fortitude about doing that because generally the, the Titanfall boost was way more drop in, drop out because people can come at whatever level they're up to and get ready. With the Seriously boost, you're you pretty much need to find people that are just about where you are. You're not going to find someone with 10,000 kills who's going to help you if you're at your first 200. So you really run through that whole thing together. So it's it's very it's it's similar to Titanfall in that yes, you do form sort of friendships, but the actual getting through of seriously is it's different. I mean, Elle and I still are pretty, you know, good friends with most of the group that we did seriously one with, and that was over a decade ago at this point. Where a lot of other Xbox folks I've known over the time you just lose touch with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've. Yeah. I think Titanfall has been the biggest boost I've ever worked on outside of maybe like Borderlands 2, but that's different. With that said, I think Seriously 3.0 can be done majority by yourself. Um, I know a lot. You can multi box certain things, but I think you can do most of it by yourself. Now, if I remember it's been correctly, a while. right, because it's been a while. The issue with the series, well, what got me out of the Seriously 3 boost is Seriously 1.0, for those of you who don't know, is 10,000 kills. It's 10,000 multiplayer kills. That's the only requirement. Seriously 2.0 was 100,000 kills, but it was any game mode. So kills in the campaign counted as well. Seriously 3.0 introduced medals. So there were, I think, 60 or 65 different targets and each target had medals that went from bronze, silver, gold to onyx. And you had had to get all of those to onyx. So some of them were like, beat the game on the impossible difficulty or whatever they called the hardest difficulty. That was an onyx medal in and of itself. Cool, you're going to get that. But 
there were other things like get 10,000 kills with each type of weapon and each one of those represented an onyx medal. So to Elle's point, yes, you could Miserable. idle a bunch of that. But if I recall correctly, and I think what got me out of there, because I think I got around 20 some onyx medals before I gave up on it, was that it used to be some of the onyx medals are attached to getting wins across different game types. So winning X number of King of the Hill games or whatever else. Uh, I don't remember exactly. And early on in the game, a tie would count for you. So you'd set a bot match up and you'd just let it run. And most of the times you wouldn't lose. Your team would tie at worst. But they changed, I think, so ties no longer counted. And that made the idle method not really Ugh. work. You needed to have a second console now because you needed to be able to introduce more controllable elements. And that was when I was like, you know what? I've probably run my Xbox... 360 at that point for several hundred hours and i wasn't even a third of the way through the achievement and i i just stopped cold i never went back to it and then four and five are progressively worse so good on those folks who stuck with it but it's it, it really requires dedication that has to be the only game you're playing yeah for for my own curiosity is there an easy way on ta to be able to see if anyone has the series completion over all the gears games sure but that Probably. series completion thing is going to include like Gears Tactics as well and Gears Judgment. So it's and those also have seriously achievements, but they're not the same types of games. So it's it's not quite the same, but I'll see if I can pull that up real quick while um uh, I was just, I know I know you guys have better TA food than I do, so <laughs> Yeah, and one last thing before I could probably we move find on. it would take me a while. <laughs> one last thing before we move on. I know I've said this on the show before, but Michelle and I have a friend who blasted through Series 3.0 in about three weeks or something ridiculous like that. And I think what? he used yeah. three Eight different Xboxes. Or something. <laughs> yeah. No, multiple Xboxes, like, multiple accounts. It was like three. It was, it was a lot. I and, and he did it, and he stopped gaming on the Xbox afterward. It broke him. <laughs> He went to I play. can imagine. My yeah. God. He's back now, but he stopped gaming for a while. He's like, why am I doing this? But now he still does it again. But he went to PlayStation <laughs> for a little while. But yeah. So I just pulled up My the goodness. series I, I, leaderboard <sighs> on TA. And, and I'm not 100% sure because I, I know that the leaderboards, I think, include all very all um stacks. Um, mm -hmm. but there are two gamers on TA that have 979 Gears achievements. So I imagine that represents the full amount. Two. And then there are two more that have Crazy. 978. And then it goes down from there. So let me just do another quick sort here, make sure I've got this right. So yeah, it, it's not a whole lot of people. There's just such a ridiculous amount of stuff that you have to do to get that done. Uh, yeah, good luck <laughs> if, if you choose to go down that particular road. Crazy. Okay, wait. But, uh... I'm able... Okay, I... yes, 907... Oops. Sorry to interrupt you one last time. I just found out how to figure... No, you good. ...to confirm this. So, yes, according to DA, they track across the whole Gears of War series. This is going to include platform variations of the game. It tracks 12 games at 979 achievements. And across the entirety of TA, there are two people two that have 979 achievements in it so good on uh let me read these names here tay tenga and mcss aero coop for that level of dedication man i wish i had dedication to anything in life the way you guys have dedicated dedication to the gear series my goodness that sounds like a form of hell trying to get all the achievements especially because i imagine it is now impossible to get that mm -hmm. because of gears pop Unless you already have the completion, obviously. That's a good point. But, uh, I hadn't even considered Gears Pop in that, but that is rip. included. It, it is one of the games that's part of it. So, yeah. Yeah. If you don't have that completion already, it is technically impossible to get the Gears completion, series completion. But yeah, as far as the games that are achievement or game or whatever that I'm going for, I think the best like goal that I have that, that fits this, and it's not necessarily a achievement it's a bunch of them is the microsoft casual games all getting all of them complete okay they all take you know 
an entire year, literally, to complete all hundreds of hours of time that you got to put into them. I'm a good bit of the way through it. Sudoku is completed. Mahjong will be done in January. I just need basically two uh, silver medals. Watermint, I don't know. And then Solitaire, that's got a bit to go. But hopefully by next year, I'll have at least Solitaire done and Watermint, I'm not sure on. I need to find a good solver for that. <laughs> I'm awful at Watermint. At the very least, I'll do all this. Uh, what do they call it? Campaign? Not the campaign. The maps. All 12 maps. But uh, yeah, uh, let's go on to L. You're up next. All right. Some uh, patron responses first. Uh, first, we're going to go with the mysterious Waka Pale, who says, seriously, 4.0 from Gears 4 Naturally. is the one I've actively been going for for the longest time. Uh, but the ones I've spent the most time on are the five crazy grind achievements in Fortnite. Now, that's interesting because I know Waka plays a lot of Battle Royales. So the Fortnite one makes sense, and I know those are supposed to be terrible. I know it's, I never hear him talking They're about... They're beyond awful. never hear him talking about shooters and gears as much. So that was interesting to learn. Uh, he also said, while earning... While I'm earning progress to each of them while playing, each individual one easily requires f- around 500 hours to unlock. I'm estimating I'll end up somewhere close to 1,000 hours before I'm done. I'm happy oh to have God. it done by the end of 2025. The silly things I do to remain number one on the Battle Royale leaderboards. Wow. That is so depressing <laughs> to read that. <laughs> to hope to have it done by 2025. <laughs> I mean, it's like those things where they ask you, like, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Like, <laughs> and they're, I have no plans for my achievements beyond, like, this week. <laughs> and he's, looking, he's got 2025 mapped out. That's amazing. The kids playing Fortnite now are going to have their own kids by the time he's done. <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen. Going um, back to what we were talking about last week, that, that shouldn't be allowed. The fact that it takes that much to unlock an achievement should almost not be allowed. That is insane. It just I don't I forget the specific details about that, but that seems worse than uh than any of the gears achievements. It says a lot about just how good at all this Waka is. Because as I recall last week you were discussing how he was challenged to beat a game and he beat it in a day. Uh you know, or like I remember, Kush, I think you were talking about it where it was something that should have taken eight hours and he did it. I asked him to review. I just asked him to tell me how the game was. And he <laughs> and he beat the game. <laughs> it was supposed to take eight hours. He did it in like half an, half an hour. Um, the, the legend grows. <laughs> right. And, um, and then we have this where he's like, so, no, yeah. I've got a plan. 2025. I'm going to stick with this game. Oh, Waka. Waka is amazing. Yeah. So it's pretty crazy what Waka does for these Battle Royale leaderboards. Like, I'm pretty sure he could have it done sooner if he stopped playing other games, but he plays a lot of different games. Yes. Uh, Echoing in his footsteps, the game I want to mention for myself is WWE 2K16. That's a specific year. It is. Haven't the server's been dead for like 10 years now? Yes. (laughs) Servers went down in 20... 17, but this game had a ridiculous grind that the previous games did not have. Um, So I had, you know, 2007 through 15 completed. And this is the first WWE game that I did not have completed. And I still don't have it completed. Was the 15 of people who the have last game- one you had completed? Right. 15 is the last one I have completed. And that's back when they were coming out on 360 and the one. So 16 was the one that was games with gold. So a lot of people actually downloaded this. It was either games with gold or free weekend or something. Cause I know a lot of people wound up with this game on their tag. I think it was games with gold. I think it was games of gold. Cause I feel like I own a WWE game. 
107,000 people have this started and only 208 people have the completion. Oh, wow. And this, and this game came out a long time ago at this point. My hour count looks to be at 175 hours. Now, basically, you just have to keep playing matches and getting whatever currency you get for winning the matches. And eventually, uh, you have to buy all the managers, all the skills, and all the abilities. And each of these achievements are... I mean, there's definitely a bump here from the games with gold and all, but these achievements are 17 and 18 ratio achievements. Uh, yeah, so just crazy. So what was the difference between 15 and 16? Just this crazy the list. It's all about this crazy list. This one had especially grand achievements. Uh, so I never got this done. Specific. And not only did I never get this done, I don't think I've completed a WWE game since. So this kind of like took my heart out of the whole thing. And I was much like Waka, I was number one in the wrestling leaderboards up until this point. And now, not so much. Well, now it sounds like you got to get back to it. Maybe. It took my heart out of it. I never even did the story mode in uh, like 17, 18, 19, 20. Don't tell Jables, but <laughs> I don't know. But the more important I'm... thing is, have you done the <laughs> online and all of those? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I made sure to get the online done before the servers go down, of course. So. You have your priorities oh, in order the then. important thing. Of course. So these are still here waiting for me. <laughs> but of course, yeah, if I took the time and did, you know, even a half hour a day, it would eventually get done. But I haven't thought about it since this question. Maybe think about it. So thanks, Chewy. On ice. I got one more patron response from what the fuck who says all your base. Great reference from Forza Horizon 2, winning all 167 championships. I'll get there. Don't know when. Doing a couple every so often. And also the freaking catch a millionaire achievement in dynamite fishing. Um, 56 hours in, I'm at 11%. Maybe someday I'll get it done. Then again, maybe not. Ugh. So of all the sports, you choose racing and fishing. <laughs> You're making wrestling look cool now. Come on. Fuck. Hey, at least Force is like Ridiculous. great. Yeah, but Force of Horizon 2? I imagine that was really good. <laughs> I don't really know. I didn't play I mean, any of the series or any of the games until 04. I mean, they're still coming out with them because they're trying to make them right still. Like That's why they keep coming out. They're still trying to perfect it. I think that's what that was told. Yeah, that's how that works. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go on to Nate now. Already? Vulgar Latin says, I don't have any. I'm the type of gamer that will look at something super grindy and smile and move on. I have nothing to prove to anyone. Good for you. Uh, Chewy on Snowball. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't just stop there. <laughs> Why not? He's well, are we trying on. to prove this? Oh, all right. So you're moving on. No, he's are we moving trying to prove on, this. So, yeah. If we're trying to prove this to other people or prove this to ourselves. Well, anyway, I was so going to see a on. wise man named Oh Fungal. <laughs> Chewy on Snowball says, "Generally speaking, I'm with Vulgar. I tend to leave big time sync achievements well enough alone, and often avoid games entirely. Where there's a big component, or where that is a big component." I've never completed a game with a time estimate longer than 80... Uh, what? Longer what? than 80 hours? Oh my gosh. That will extend to individual achievements too, so I don't really have any on the go. Seriously was the exception to that rule, and only because it had a social element. I'm apparently easily persuaded to do stupid stuff. Uh, you are part of the podcast, so yes, we agree. If there were <laughs> other social grinds like that, I might get involved in them, but maybe not if they take two years again. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Uh, wow. Never done a game with a time estimate longer than 80 hours. Now, that doesn't mean he hasn't spent more than 80 hours on a game. <laughs> just, just games that have time estimates of 80 hours. That's interesting. Um, so for me, 
uh, I, I play the long games. Uh, we know that happens. Mm-hmm. And no, you um, don't. So, so things like star balls, like <laughs> that thing gets grinded uh, forever. Forgot that uh, was a thing. Oh, yeah. what was that quiz game? High five or five, five alive or give me five. Give, give me, five. me five. <laughs> there you go. Johnny five is alive. Five. Yep. Uh, so that game, oh, yeah. I think I've been grinding that one for a while. Uh, uh, just to get money manually, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that one's that one. I'm getting money, but what am I currently grinding? Uh, like intentionally, like working on that would be right now. The longest thing is the division, uh, and that is the underground DLC. Uh, we're, we're grinding to reach underground rank forty, and we've been doing that for a couple couple months now. Uh, I got a you know, a group that we do that on Wednesday nights and we just get together and we just grind out underground missions while we're trying to get all their achievements. And I'm currently in the lead by like two levels. I think I just hit level 30. So we've got, um, we probably have another five to eight weeks (laughs) of grinding to get to rank 40. And uh, it's fun. It's a good time. We, you know, we just, talk while we're playing and every now and then we will call out you know where tough enemy is and such but uh uh it's been a good time uh and and those you know i don't do a whole lot of grinding where it's me actively playing so when it's with other people yeah that's that's when i really go for those ones oh it's much better with other players who are you doing that one with uh so that wednesday night group is matism uh freem and saucy slingo what a crew yeah, no you can imagine the conversations detected. we have. So <laughs> detected, <friendly. laughs> it's a good time. All right. In that case, let's move to Michelle. Yeah, you know, just it's it's dawning me as we we're speaking about this that a game I hadn't even thought to mention, except for we we're just talking about this sort of social uh, portion of some of these grinds, is actually one that Elle and I just finished uh, along with uh, Ice Fire and Prue was uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutants in Manhattan. I mean, that was grindy, and we're getting ready to do it again. So, fun, fun, fun. But when you're working with a group of people, the grind doesn't seem quite as bad in a case like that. Because it's sort of similar to what we talked about with Titanfall before. There's enough variety in the gameplay where even though you're really working on the same sort of stuff, it doesn't feel as bad as something like Seriously, where once again, it's the same exact routine over and over yeah. again. So, I have... A couple patron responses here I'm going to read. I'm going to start with Philip Wendell. He said, The mask told me to achievement in Party Hard 2. It's glitched, so you have to complete every task for every level and then start a new game and only score one tough task on a certain level to get it. I spent hours towards it and it didn't unlock. Oof. Then I found that I have to use a specific character to complete the tasks, so now I have to start over. I want to get it, but it's a huge pain. Stupid 25 point achievement. That sounds doubly terrible. That sounds awful. Yeah, because not only is it a big, grindy achievement, but it seems like it's very easy to lock yourself out of without realizing you have done so. Then uh, I also have this response from P-Tart uh, that she's surprised that nobody has mentioned Jeff yet from Gems of War. It involves an insane amount of play to gather the required resources of metals and souls. I have all the required metals, but lack the souls needed to upgrade my troops. I have not been actively grinding souls, but normal daily progress in the game has me chipping away at it. Achievement Tracker has me at 75%, so I anticipate I will unlock this in spring of 2023. 2025. <laughs> yeah, right, because, of course, Waka just laughs in the face of spring of 2023. He's, he's right. got that long-term planning unlock. Uh, yeah, the Jeff achievement is, is crazy, and that was uh, my initial thinking about this is uh, for myself, like, I've been working on this a long time too, but I'm in a different situation. I'm I'm actually done with everything I need for it. So I can just pop that achievement whenever. I have the required really? souls. I have the required medals. I have more than enough troops. I am good to go. So I've honestly been sitting on it waiting for a time. A time when it will help me in a contest. A time when it'll hit a cool milestone. Nice. But the reason why more than any of that that I haven't finished it yet, is it's not really going to be the end because they're always releasing new achievements. And 
the this achievement is something that just takes so much time that I don't want to go get the completion and have them release some ridiculous time gate stupid thing. Like I, I want that to be the exclamation point at the end of this particular sentence. And that sucks. <laughs> like they need to sunset this game already and and move on to whatever else they had planned. I guess the new puzzle quest wasn't quite what they anticipated it would be in terms of uh pickup from people. Um but yeah, that's that's definitely the one that I'm looking to to finish, but I'm not currently working on it really because I'm I'm done with it as of this point. It's just a matter of getting it done. Uh, but do you have all the other achievements besides that? I one? have everything. I just need to wow. pop that whenever I'm ready to do it. And like I said, I have all of the resources. There's no worry. There's no worry they might patch the game and mess up something somewhere by what with the next update. Just there, get there it wasn't. Now there is. They're really bad at a lot of stuff. <laughs> now that I said it, they're really bad at a lot of stuff. <laughs> but they haven't really broken achievements. They've released a couple of things where the achievement didn't work as intended right away but those they've managed to generally sort so i'm i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that over seven years they still haven't disabled or broken any of the achievements in the game so it should be okay it's a fair point and that would stink obviously but maybe i need that sort of kick in the pants to get me to never try anything like this ever again (laughs) Uh, but I, I do have on my radar a couple of grindy achievements I want to try to take care of at some point because I keep mentioning them. Most, Namely, Seriously 2.0, because that's all I have left in Gears of War 2, and it's leave your console on overnight with the controller set in a certain pattern, and it'll do the work for you, as long as you have a turbo controller available. Uh, and the 10,000 kills in Castlevania... Uh, harm, no, which, what's it? I can't remember the name of the Xbox Live Arcade when um, all of a sudden. HD. Harmony but, of Dissonance? Is it Harmony of Dissonance? But it's... HD. Yeah, I know, Harmony but it's just... Harmony of... Yeah, I, that's the problem. Is there's a dissonance and despair. Cognitive... Di- yeah. Um, one of those. But either way, there's the 10,000 kill... Hard that, drive. And that's one where you can't idle it in any way, to my knowledge. So you, you have to... There's a tower that has the floating Medusa heads. If you've ever played a 2D Castlevania game, you know. And you're supposed to just kind of hang out in that tower and get as many kills as you can game runs are limited so it's not that you can just leave it on and going you have to keep restarting them so i have to get those done but i'm not actively trying for them right now so i guess i'll go with jeff but again jeff is done i just need to actually click the buttons and get that done Hmm. nice that gems of water is a ridiculous stupid grind that will never end because they will never stop releasing ridiculous achievement after ridiculous achievement for that game until they're ready to pull the plug on that which i doubt will be anytime soon i don't Uh. know what would finally get them to do it because the player base is basically no one at this point it the the players that have been there forever are still kind of hanging around but there's not a whole lot of activity there like the active guilds are active but it's not this like super competitive sort of space and because of the game being seven years old with seven years worth of different updates, the barrier to entry is kind of gross. Like you might play it and start thinking, yeah. oh, this is puzzle quest kind of stuff. But when you really achievement hunters who look at this list, you can get the base thousand pretty easy. But a lot of the other stuff, like you need to be in active guilds and you need to be putting in hours to build things up and all that it is just it is not gonna attract a new gamer who's interested at the in the achievement portion of it. So I don't know what their end game is because I can't imagine that it's it's doing that much for them anymore for the developer, but what do I know? I wonder if they do have those stats somewhere of like active players or whatever. Daily active players. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. And I'm sure it's much smaller on Xbox than it is on PC. Probably. Yeah, I always maintain that uh, if Michelle had never started this game, she'd have like 2 million gamer score. Well, I'm 5, not going <laughs> to do the math on it, but according to <laughs> according to the tracker on Xbox, like on the game page, I have played this game for 139 days, one hour and 38 minutes. It's oh my like god! Over a third of a year. That's a oh. lot of time. <laughs> so of your life. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of that's idling or just leaving it on overnight or whatever. But a lot of the majority of that is actively sitting there and grinding, and that's that's terrible. 
And I'm only ranked sixth on my friends list at 139 days in. It's just that kind of thing. <laughs> Massive time commitment. You're not going right. to shame the other people? I mean, I'll, I'll shame the other people. That there's Carnage? No, no, not Carnage. Carnage fell off. He, he kind of stopped... Uh playing super hard as a p-tart right I'm, if, if that's the deal with jeff right like p-tart used to play this a whole whole lot if p-tart had kept playing it at that level through the whole time she would have enough for the jeff achievement likely but if part of the fear with a game like gems is if i know for myself if i stop playing it for like a week i will never go back to it and to put in all this time and not finish it seems silly uh but according to my list here the the number one gamer on my list uh, at least is isret and i'm sure a lot of that again is just it's on while he's doing stuff and and they do have a mechanic yeah. now where you can auto play battles at a slow speed uh but yeah he's got uh, 532 days worth of time clocked into gem so he's your whiz yeah my goodness my goodness all right well, if nobody has any other achievements that they want to talk about, uh, let's move on to a ga- let's move on to the game showcase. That was a good question there, Chili. I appreciate that. And if any patrons want to recommend uh, or want to give us a question or give us a topic for us to talk about, just send one of us a message or add at podcast and patron VIP in the Discord. But either way. Let's get into the game showcase. Uh, let's start with Nate. Oh, right. I would like to take a break from playing Game Pass games what? and switch to something. For two days. That, I know. I know. <laughs> For five minutes, I'll stop playing Game Pass. Uh, and I want to play a game that we talked about last week in the sales because Fug uh, both recommended to me and then also complained about the same game. That game is a rise, a simple <laughs> story. Um, so this was on sale last week. It's currently not on sale. Um, it cost $20 uh, without being on sale. And the sale, low sale price was $8. Um, this game, if you've, if you've heard other games I reviewed and other games I've gushed about, uh, and then you saw the screenshots of this game, you would say, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, oh, yeah. This is a Koosh game. This is a game that he's going to be look at and say, I need to play that. Uh, and I, I absolutely did. I bought it uh, when it was on a decent sale. Uh, and then, of course, put it to the side because I don't play the things I like. Uh, and then <laughs> <laughs> I just picked this game up because I started talking about it in the sales. It's like, you know what? I need to play that game. Uh, I've recommended it or I've thought about recommending it a couple of times just based on the fact that it's a good price and it looks good. I went ahead and I played it. And uh, I think Fug is crazy. Uh, He said that the game uh, is, uh, you know, really pretty, but then um, it it gets bogged down and it kind of loses, you know, uh, it's just not as good in the back half. Uh, He said, I want to like Arise, but it's platforming and game design is so bad. So. I am currently halfway through the game. I've completed five of 10 levels. Uh, unless the game just takes a right turn uh, or, and, and just goes downhill, uh, I, don't, I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, because I really enjoy this game. Uh, it is a kind of a fixed camera game. So the camera is in one position, and as you move through the level, it's going to kind of turn on its own zoom in on its own zoom out on its own so you don't you have no control over the camera uh for the most part it is behind you as you're just progressing forward through these platforming and puzzle type levels uh you initially start out uh you're an old man uh so you you know why fug and i both like it uh and then uh the old man dies and then his his friends and family uh burn him on a pyre and then he kind of goes away to the street do you continue to like it at this point or is this like scary portents of the future well, I mean, like you know we're all gonna go there but oh okay fair fair but this guy he's, <laughs> he's he's on this he's on this journey we assume in the afterlife i haven't gotten all the way through it but i pretty much know what's happening so he is basically reliving his life key moments in his life that all seem to be centered around his wife 
uh, in the very first scene, uh, he wakes up. He's uh, he's in the snow. Um, you have the ability to move around the level, jump, climb, um, and you'll eventually get the the ability to uh, move time. That, that actually, uh, actually, no, the time ability comes right away. You can using the right stick, you can back time up a little bit or move time forward in terms of like seasons. So it's kind of like um, uh, season of. What was that? Was the fall of seasons or seasons after fall? Can't remember what that game was. There you go. Seasons yeah, after yeah. fall. So seasons after fall, you could change uh, to different times of year. Uh, mm-hmm. This is kind of like that, but you, 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 it's more gradual. It's like shades of you're going from winter to spring, uh, and when you do that, the environment changes. Uh, in some levels, that means that snow uh, mounds grow or shrink, water rises or falls. Uh, in another level, it has to do with earthquakes. So you'll see the earth actually shifting, and you're kind of like working your way down this uh, this gorge, and you'll see like both sides of the gorge kind of come together or pull apart. Uh, you'll see uh, like bridges fall or reassemble. You'll see boulders come tumbling down the hill or moving back up the hill, depending on how you uh, move time. You then also get the ability to pause time. So... Um, if you were to rewind time and then things would kind of play out uh, in, in normal speed, like that boulder would keep moving or you can pause it now. Now you can jump on the boulder and then start moving time forward as you walk on top of the boulder, as it tumbles back up the hill, but you have to keep yourself on top of it. Uh, there's one section where a tree falls down, uh, the side of the cliff and you need to, uh, walk along that tree. And then when it goes vertical, you have to walk over the top of it. And then keep rotating and keep walking on it. So they have these really cool puzzles. Uh, and as you move through, uh, the game changes. and You find all sorts of new ways to do puzzles. There's, there's another level where uh, there are figments of your imagination. Or, you know, things that you're worried about. And if they touch you, if enough of them touch you, you'll die. You have to start it from a checkpoint that's, you know, not too far back. Their, their checkpoints are pretty, uh, pretty good. Um, but when there's a lightning strike, those figments disappear. So because you can pause time and roll back and roll forward, uh, you can remove them from your path and then run through and then they make it more challenging. Like there will be segments where you have to fast forward time a little bit or rewind time in order to get both sections to kind of line up as you're running through, not to get hit. Um, But it's a beautiful game. Um, The graphics uh, are right there. They're just what I want. They're not, um, you know, super realistic. They're the cartoon style that they have the cartoony style just is so good uh and it just looks great uh the music is good uh, there are collectibles in every level and they are basically just little memories so every time you go to pick one up you get a screenshot uh and it kind of progresses and tells you the story of what's going on in that level and every every level is basically a theme um uh so the very first level you're starting off you're meeting this you're meeting eventually who's going to be your wife uh, and so it's like their friendship. And then uh, there's like, a, there's a level where you're chasing a kite and the kite has gone away and you're trying to get the, return the kite to her. Um, and of course I think it's, you know, every level is going to progress to a point in their relationship. So you kind of know where it's going. You kind of know how it's going to end sort of, you have an idea. Uh, like I said, I'm halfway through, I haven't seen the, the, the complete ending, uh, as for achievements, um, there's achievements for finishing every level. Uh, and then there are achievements for getting all of the collectibles uh, in each level. So an achievement for getting all the collectibles on level one, level two, level three. And then there's a meta achievement for getting all of the uh, collectibles in all the levels. And then in every level, there is a special uh, achievement, something different, something unique. Um, mm-hmm. Like in the first level, it's running over 100 dandelions. And I just I just love this. Like this is this is a great Simple. achievement list. Great achievement list. It's a simple little thing, but it's different and it changes per level. So in the first level, it's running over dandelions. In the second level, it's uh, running through dewdrops. The explode a hundred dewdrops by running through them or sliding through them. On the third level, it's it's stepping on passable bushes. That one's not so great. <laughs> You're just kind of running through bushes, but whatever. Uh, and then um, I'm just having a great time with this game. I I can't see how it's going to fail. So so tune in next week. When it takes and it falls on its head uh, and just and it falls on its face and just ruins everything. Uh, and I'll come back and I'll be like, oh, that's why Fug said it was horrible. But 
Right now, I have a hard time believing that that's going to happen. Um, it's just, uh, it's a really great game so far. Uh, and the, the creativity uh, per level is um, it's fantastic. You know, some games you play <coughs> Halo, and every, every different level is the same corridor with the same pattern. Hey, this that is a platform game. since Halo 2. Mm-hmm, okay. So in this one, <laughs> the, your pr- first thing you're doing is you're running through like, uh, like a you know these little islands, and you're raising and lowering water to get and climb these little uh, these cliff walls and jumping across all these little platform elements. In, in the second level, um, it's more like flowery, and um, you're you're sliding through like a little woodsy area, and then at the very end, you're jumping from like sunflower to sunflower, and you're tilting like the head of the sunflower as it as it goes to face the sunlight and you're just, you're, you're doing all these platforming elements. Super cool. And you're like jumping from spider web to spider web or grabbing onto a, like a bee or lassoing to a bee and then letting it swing you through the level. The creativity so far from level to level is amazing. Uh, it, it, you know, it's not samey samey. Like every, every level is something different. Uh, so there's, it's a great game. Uh, and like, I don't understand how it's going to, how it's going to fail me, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, five more levels, like I said, five more levels, uh, and I'm I'm really enjoying this game. Uh, at eight dollars, what a fantastic deal! It's twenty dollars now, so uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, I was watching a couple of clips while you're talking about this game. This screams your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this I is would say one hundred percent an eight game. <laughs> I would say twenty dollars is is fair, <laughs> actually. So far, like if it keeps up with the pace that it's going, and I would think twenty dollars is a fair price for for the variety you're getting in this game. But at $8, yeah, I would I would definitely recommend uh, checking this out and seeing if it uh, it's going to scratch that itch for you. I will say you're not alone uh with this either. There's about 1600 people on TA that have played this and mm-hmm. it's got a 4.11 uh, rating. So you're not the I only think, one that's gushing about this. Yeah, I think Fug might just be uh might be worried about the ending. I think it might be it. Uh, he hasn't finished the game, <laughs> by the way. Uh, he uh, he's sitting at an eight sixty six TA score out of one thousand seven hundred and ninety nine. Um, so I'm not quite sure uh, what the frustration is, but I'm having a great time with it, and I, I'm recommending it right now. Did you Good so far look at the achievement list at all during going through this, or you're just kind of enjoying a natural playthrough and? You'll clean up after. How's that approach been? Yeah, so uh, that's a good. Good question. So, um, with any game that I'm trying to enjoy, I don't really look at the achievement list. Like if I'm just going through and I just want to, I just want to play the game. I'll just go in and I'll just play the game. I don't really focus on the achievement list. After I get into it a little bit, I might start kind of peeking at the achievement list if it's not completely obvious what's going to happen. But this game right from the get-go was like, oh, okay, so there's something for completing the level, there's something for a collectible, and then there's just something cool uh, per level. So I, I've looked at them, and I've, I've confirmed, yes, that's the case. And then there's some meta ones, like um, getting all the achievements in the game, getting all the collectibles in the game. But that's it. And um, so I, I didn't really look at it at the beginning, but I've, that's, I've gone ahead and I've looked at it. Uh, the nice thing about the collectibles is as soon as you pick them up, it saves that state. Oh, nice. So you don't have to keep playing the level. Yeah. So I And there were a couple where I missed a, a collectible, and I was like, oh, man, guess I'm going to have to do that again. Maybe that's what Fug hates. Um, but I went back, and I got I got one that was, like, right near the beginning. It saved. I said, all right, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to leave the level. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to see what happens. And sure enough, I, I have it. It's been saved. I got the achievement. I go, you know, I go look at that level, and it shows that I've got nine of nine. So... Okay, nice. Uh, yeah, so it's great for cleanup. Um, and the levels aren't that long each. I would say if you know what you're doing, you can probably get through a level in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, as you're exploring, sure, they could take uh, you know half an hour to an hour uh, just as you're figuring out the mechanics, depending on the level. Some of them are a little bit more uh, involved in, than the others. Um, but yeah. Um, you might have said this and I might have missed it. But is there like a chapter select to go back and if you miss any of that stuff? Oh, there absolutely is. So there's like a hub world. Uh, and uh, every, yeah, yeah. So when you go into a level, um, there's like a little light area on the snow. You kind of go there. He kind of like builds up a little 
a symbol basically for that level that's kind of like the theme uh and then you can uh use that symbol to go into the level and do it and if you need to go back to any other levels you just go back out to the main area the that hub area and you just go to the one that you need to do and it'll show you how many collectibles you have uh so you'll know if you have to get any more and then you can just go back to that level and get what you need and then quit out nice achievement tracking uh yes even uh, better i think it does i think it does have achievement tracking but it really doesn't need it so much um because you know it, it's very easy to tell what you're missing uh when you're looking at the uh the collectibles number one there's uh there's a screen for each of the screenshots so you, and you can see them uh in the order you're supposed to get them so if you miss one there's a gap so you can tell exactly oh, okay it's between where i got that one and that one um there is no uh, marker in the world if you've already picked one up it won't be like a lighter color one or like a transparent one just kind of floating um but for the most of them i think all these yeah all all the um all the collectible achievements have an answer they have a solution and it's perfect it's got a little text description of where each one is uh, and what you have to do to get it so i actually use that to clean up uh one of the levels where they were a little bit trickier to find uh and worked great it, it's very it's very well done nice all right yep this definitely looks like a neat game 100 yeah. percent. yeah i, I hope uh, other looks people like it too all right well if there's no other questions or anything about that game um let's go to l next what game would you like to talk about hello Oh, well, I just wanted to touch on a couple of uh, achievements from a couple of games. Uh, the first is good old Battletoads, uh, which I played back before when it came out, but it showed up on my RTDL, and it was the highest Naturally. achievement on my list. And in Scavenger, so I reasoned out which one it was, and it was the one to get every collectible in the game. Sounds easy, right? Well, no, no, <laughs> it's not because they're not just collectibles uh, that you have to find throughout the stages. There are certain collectibles that you earn for skill related things, uh, such as beating a level in a specific time and getting a ranks in all the fights. So. I enlisted help from Michelle and from my son, and we played some three-player local. And we had fun. So the interesting thing is that there's an achievement for getting 75 collectibles. But the weird part is there's only 78 collectibles in the game. So I found that 75 one to be kind of weird. But as I say that, it looks like there are over 150 people that got the 75, but not 78. So that's interesting. Uh, the achievement for getting all 78 is called, did you use a walkthrough? Why, yes. Yes, I did. I actually used a Macca's Guide video walkthrough. And he does a pretty good job of telling you where everything is. Some of them are pretty well hidden. And then, like I said, there's a couple that I did with Michelle that we had to do several times related to speed runs, basically. So you have to go through. Uh, there's these certain levels that are not beat em up levels. They are ones where you have to platform and do puzzles and all kinds of stuff. Move blocks around. So those took a little while. And then there are these other kind of levels that you have to fall, really. Uh, you have to fall, basically. So it reminded me of those stages in Rayman Legends where you have to fall and not hit, get hit by the branches. Or even if you're old, like in uh, the old Mega Man games, remember, Nate, where the lasers are coming and you just keep going down and you have to try not to get hit by them. What? So good times. Uh, there was an interesting thing I noted. I noticed with the achievements that might help someone, so I'll let you know, that if you get a local friend... To play with you, their collectible count will match yours. 
That's nice. So, so what I mean by that is, um, when my son started playing with us, uh, Michelle and I had played previously, and after we got one collectible, uh, his achievement tracking went up to where ours was. So, uh, without him actually collecting them all on his own. So that's really nice. He unlocked the achievement with us for getting all the collectibles. Now, once you get all of them, I don't imagine that will work. We did not test that. But if you have almost all of them and you bring someone with you, they will get the achievement as well. I think I'll tell you what, I'll let you have my logins <laughs> and we'll see if maybe <laughs> sure. it unlocks them all, you know, just for science. I, I think it's worth pointing out though, and the reason why that is not likely to work, but you can still try it's unlike Arise, you have to finish the level for the collectible to count. So we had one of these stages we were working on, and we went, we got the collectible, I immediately died, no problem, let's finish the stage, and that collectible was no longer uh, credited to us. So uh, keep that in mind if you're doing collectibles cleanup, that you can see exactly which collectible you're missing, they're presented in order, well, make sure you finish each level yes. when you're doing that. Let's start. Well, well, what actually happened is you died before we hit the next checkpoint. Right. Yes, that's true. So once you hit a checkpoint, once you hit a checkpoint, you're you're good. Well, once you correct me if I'm wrong, but I so think once you happened. hit a, a checkpoint, the game continues to give you credit, but it won't like count toward your total. Like you have to finish the stage. You can't quit out of the stage at that point. Or could you? Oh, yes, that is true. Yes, yes. But there was a separate issue where. Right. We yes. had gotten the collectible and then died and then didn't count. Yeah. So I just wanted to give that little bit of advice uh, for anyone who plays with local friends or family. And then the other game that I've been working on recently is Guacamelee 2, which was the November Vayner of the month. And to be honest, I forgot about this and I'm the one that uh, nominated this game. <laughs> wow so i'm like wait a minute and this was and it also showed up on my rtdl which was good synergy but i'm like all right and i guess what kept me from going to it also was it was these uh proven ground achievements which is a dlc in the second game but it's similar to the inferno challenges in the first game and i remember when i did it previously i had some issues with them and i could only get bronze in, in certain ones so there's bronze, silver, or gold. Now there's an achievement for getting all the silvers. Um, now there's no achievement that explicitly says get all the golds, but there's one that says you have to bring a special character, Salvatore, to a certain place. And to unlock him, you have to get all the golds. So I wish they had just said that off the bat. So you have to do some research and figure that out. So you do have to get all the golds, and you unlock the character. And... You know, I banged my head against the wall and I eventually finished it. So that's one of those achievements that, you know, you feel good once you get it done. Mm -hmm. So I got all that done. The only achievement I have left is to complete the game on hard. Uh, one other note is that I ha I did have a hard uh, save. I didn't say what you thought I was going to say. I have, a, nice. <laughs> I have a, a save on hard on a different save file. And if you go to look at your costumes, your costumes are there from your other playthrough. So I did the Proving Grounds on my normal playthrough, and they're all still there. This is important because the Salvador costume gives you more damage, more attack damage. So that might prove useful. Because I know there's a lot of people that go straight too hard, um, which normally isn't unlocked, but there is an unlock code to, to start on hard if you wanted to. I think that actually hard is is actually pretty hard. I think it's more fun to play through on normal first and then play a second run on hard. But I understand in the interest of time, maybe you want to do hard at first. So there is a code you could input that's in the solution. Uh, but if you do play at normal first... Yep, it is a, a cheat code you put in the main menu and it unlocks hard. Yep. Good old cheat codes like we used back on the NES that we found in Nintendo Power. Well, that's Counselor's cool. Corner, Classified, something. Yeah. 
So, yeah, I played a lot of games with green characters, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I hope they make Guacamole 3. Maybe That'll one make day. Me happy. That'll make me happy. Me happy. They should announce Guacamole 3 and Ori 3 on the same day, right, Nate? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Nate's heart one now. I, I, I wouldn't be able to take it. I'm getting too old for that. <laughs> Those kinds of surprises. Uh, I just, I, I, it's hard to tell if it did well in the sales department. That's my only issue. I feel like the first game got a lot of good praise and hype. And of course, we got it in uh, Games with Gold at launch. But two, not so much. I think there's probably a better chance of Ori 3. Well, yeah. Yeah. Don't want to go there. Uh, <laughs> you know, Moon Studios had a little bit of bad publicity, so I don't know. Uh, mm. They did? Yeah. Yeah. They had a little bit of bad publicity and some employees weren't happy, so I don't I don't know if they're going to be the same Moon Studios that they were before. So. Well, that's sad. Yeah. All right. They'll make a spiritual spiritual successor wherever they go, I'm sure. That'll be Mori. And Drinkbox made uh, Nobody Saves the World, which is very good, but... Yes, it is. It's no guac. Just real fun. Even when I was getting frustrated at losing or getting so close and losing, I was I was still having fun. So that's how you know it's a good game. Mm-hmm. And you, and you know, like, oh, I could do this. Oh. And then you yeah, fail. Finally get it done. <laughs> no! Yes. Got the proving grounds done, and there's a sign in the game where it's you see proving grounds in the same font as uh PUBG, so it says like the, the battlegrounds font, but it says proving grounds. Huh. There's a lot of Easter eggs like that. I just love Guacamelee games. Oh man, getting excited! All right, move on to someone else before I just get too excited. All right, well, I'm going to go next. So I've been playing a game that's actually new, new. It came out last Tuesday, and it actually launched straight into Game Pass, which is all the more reason why I've played it, because don't want to buy more games that I can't, I don't have the time to play. <clears throat> I've been playing Gungrave Gore. Now, uh, who was that? I forget who me- who mentioned it, but someone mentioned that this apparently was a old title that went back to the ps2 so i did actually did some looking the first one released on the ps2 in 2002 then it got a sequel overdose in 2004 and then it died until it, until it was on the vr or a playstation vr in 2017 and now we got gungrave gore um oh man the best way to explain this game is what <laughs> I'm just, I, I'm waiting to hear. I'm I'm really I'd love to hear. Have you played it? Yes. Okay. Um man, wow. I think the best way to explain the combat in this game is it is it's a third person shooter, but think of like the arcade games like in in the malls or an arcade or whatever, the like on games. It's very similar to that where you're just going from point A to point B. There are lots of lots of enemies that just constantly just pop into in into the level from random places or from behind doors or whatever. You know, you have enemies that appear on a balcony with the rocket launcher that you have to deflect the, the rocket back to them or whatever. And like it even has like the um like the reticle reticle on the screen that's where really like the big box very much like the gun like the light gun games um and it's also like you know how like when you play fighting games and you look at the move list and there's a lot of different button combinations and attack patterns and combos that you can do yeah this game has that too so like i said it's a primarily it is a first person shooter or i'm sorry a third person shooter um and you play as this guy 
I would imagine it's 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 kind of Japanese. Like if look up the game, and you'll see what you'll see what I mean. But you play like this bigger dude. He has like long hair, sunglasses. He actually almost has. He almost looks like great value uh, version of um, the guy from Brutal Legend. Almost. He walks around. Yeah, he has two pistols. That's that's the guns that you use to shoot everyone with. But the very but the thing that really uh, stands out is that he has this giant gun cannon thing that's strapped to him that like hangs off the back of him by two chains that are strapped to like his biceps. It is a crazy game uh, character design. I don't I I don't know if I didn't look into the history of the game that much to, to know if this character uh what's his name Grave was like the, was like he always had this this uh design or whatnot but it's uh it's something else but yeah the game like I said it plays very much like an art on like an arcade shooter where you go through a level, you're trying to get your hit combo up. They call it a beat combo in this for whatever reason. Um, at you trying to kill all the enemies, not die. Obviously you get to the end of the level and you actually get scored on how fast you're able to beat the, beat the level, how many enemies you're killed, your counters and all that stuff. And depending upon how well you do, you actually get uh, DNA, I believe is what they call it, in order to upgrade your skills and upgrade uh, your guns and unlock more combos. It's um, it's something. <laughs> it's not necessarily. It's not a bad game. It's just it's it's something. I'm curious. Uh, what do you think about it, Nate? Since you act, since you have played it, I actually didn't expect anyone to have played this game. Well, let me just say, uh, let me pull a Kenny on you. Uh, <laughs> would you say that this game is in Game Pass? How would you think the value <laughs> of this game matches the uh, the gameplay that you get? Fifty dollar um, game. I was just about to say this is a fifty dollar game. Um, I would like to just put a little asterisk on what I'm about to say. I have not actually beaten the game yet. I don't. Th- I could not imagine someone spending fifty dollars on this. Yeah, I, I think it would be instant regret. <laughs> had you yes. paid fifty dollars for this game. Um, you, I think you nailed it on the feel. Uh, I, I hadn't considered it that way, but yes, it it definitely feels like an arcade, uh, like term- T two Terminator two, a little bit like that. There's mm-hmm. just stuff popping in everywhere. There's endless enemies. Some of them so have shields. Bullets. Yeah, some of them have shields that you have to use special moves to break the shields. There's a couple different moves that'll do that. Um, and then there's yeah, the reflecting the rockets is annoying. The oh, it's window the worst. For, the the window for the reflect time is like it's really ambiguous. Like your spin move where you're spinning that huge they call it the coffin. That gun that's strapped yeah. to his back. They call it the coffin. Um, and uh that the the window for hitting that just right is horrible. So on the harder difficulty, um you'll lose a third of your shield. So you have an overshield and then you have a health bar. When your when your overshield goes down, you start losing health, you know. Uh that's that's very Are common. You, so but did you, you jump right into this and start playing on hard? I did. I jumped right in. And I was like, oh you have to, you know, I'm gonna see if it stacks. Uh bad news, it does not stack. I had so that you, note written down. I was <laughs> I was wondering if you saw that. Yeah, yeah. So you can't play hard and get hard, normal, and easy. And there's an achievement for playing through the entire game on easy on normal on hard there's level select so if you miss anything you can go back to it if for instance you played easy uh so you started at normal you finished the first level you said i don't really like normal i'm gonna play on easy for the rest of the game if you do that you won't get the achievement for completing everything on on easy until you go back and play the easy level again right you have to just select it set the difficulty to easy and beat it now that won't get you the achievement right away you then have to go fight the boss again on easy and that's when it does the check is after you beat that boss to make sure that every level has been beaten so don't worry uh the solutions say you can go back and do that again um the game is interesting what do you think of the music it's not bad 
Well, I thought you might say that. Well, uh, <laughs> at times it's not bad. Some of them, some of the music, it's like t- uh, techno-y metal. It's, I guess you could say, like, think Japanese anime-ish hard rock metal. Whatever it is that you're thinking, that yeah, that's it. My problem, one of the problems that I have with the music is that whenever there are enemies, it is pumping, it is going, you, you, it's, you know, put you in that mood to where you want to sit there and just keep spamming and, and killing everything. And then as soon as all the enemies are dead, it stops and it's nice and it's like this nice calm music. And it's actually kind of jarring at some points. Yeah. I found it very annoying. Um, yes. All the call outs and like the, there's, oh. there's a, there's a person who's in your ear. So uh, annoying. Telling you things. So I found this game is better to play. Grave, with. look out. Enemies yeah. are coming. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, L, but this game is played better with the sound and the music completely off and you're, and you're watching <laughs> something else. Um, you will get carpal tunnel by shooting. Uh, you have to, you have to you pull the right to trigger. That. Oh my pull gosh. The right trigger all the time. You're going to get carpal tunnel. Uh, so if you this want to set up sad. a rapid fire controller, do it. Uh, the combos, uh, they don't always register. Uh, they're hard for me, at least, to get the combos to register. I haven't even uh, tried, honestly. Yeah, yeah. They're they're kind of spotty, especially when you get backed into a corner and you have like a little stun. So this is not a great game, uh, but it's not horrible. Like this is a. It's not. It, it's, it's not unless you're a completionist. Yeah, it's not. It's it's on Game Pass. It's free to give it a shot. It's, it's not, not horrible. horrible. And uh, and I find myself, I'm compelled Lovely to praise. complete this game. <laughs> I, really? I'm compelled to complete it. Yeah. I've done about, I don't know, I don't know how many levels there are. I feel like I'm halfway through the game. Um, I've done, I did like four of them on hard, and then I got to a boss I just couldn't beat. And I was like, ah, screw this. Like, I'm going to go level up. Uh, so then I backed it down. Uh, one of the things you'll find uh, reading through the solutions is you, you get the same amount of DNA no matter what difficulty you're you're playing. So just play on easy. Just play on easy. Get get all your money there, uh, level up, and then just go through each level, and and you should be okay. I I haven't run into anything that's like too difficult to handle. Uh, like I think I think I'm halfway through the game. I think once everything is maxed out, I think it's going to be doable. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not a great game. I, I was trying to use this as a uh, holdover from a game that I was really excited about, Evil West. I was like, oh, Gungrave Gore could maybe scratch that itch. Uh, yeah, it, there's no way it scratches that itch, but for free, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, reading through the solutions also, they mentioned how after you beat easy and normal, you then get more powerful weapons for your hard mode uh, playthrough. So I did not know that. That sound, that's great because hard yes. was a little bit tough on some of the bosses. So. See, and that's actually something that I was wondering now. I'm actually kind of glad that you did play on hard mode. I should have tried on hard just to see, but I guess it just never really dawned on me. But like playing on easy, it almost feels too easy. Like at no point do I ever feel like I'm going to die or like I have to start using the combos or I have to use the special moves in the game, which they call demolition attacks. Yeah. Like I never feel like I have to use that. All I do is just spam the, the, uh, the gun, the triggers, to just sit there and just keep shooting and shooting yeah. and shoot. Go fight that first boss uh, on hard, and then it'll get you, it'll make you better at the game. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, in, in order to beat the level, you have to figure out the mechanics. But uh, uh, yeah, the, the next boss that you had to fight was just like this this uh, monster that would charge you a lot. It was that now that yeah. was just annoying on easy. He like never even got close to killing me, but like his lunge attack, it was so obnoxious to try to dodge. Yeah, and yeah, because he'd lunge in and then he'd do like a tail swipe and like it's really hard to get out of that and, and not take damage. And on hard, it knocks down like a third of your shield. Um, so you get a couple of those mistakes and you and you're you're pretty much done. Especially if you don't have any health upgrades. I had one health upgrade, so I had almost half of your max health when I tried to fight him on hard. And I think it would be definitely doable with with better guns. So uh, if if the rest of the boss fights go like that, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, in the solutions, they didn't say that was one of the harder fights. So I think there oh, are harder enough. fights to come. So we'll <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to finish it. Uh, I'm just going to chip away at it uh, while watching a TV show. Yeah, I did. I I did exactly what you said. I turned the music down. Like I didn't want to have it, you know, just quiet. 
So I, but I did turn like my volume down just so I had something in the background, but it wasn't totally silent. And if you think it's just us, uh, on TA it has a 2.85 ratio, uh, rating. So, which yeah. I personally feel like it should be like that, that two five. I was going to ask because it looks like from looking at the achievements on TA that this game is very, very easy to get on your tag. And I was wondering how many people might be like, anger reviewing yes. it because they really didn't want it on their tag they just wanted to kind of see what it's about i can see that so yeah, it's that pr- actually springboards into exactly what i was about to say when i said completion is beware before like be aware if you want to try this because while ta has it at a 30-ish hour completion. And like Nate said, it's probably not that difficult outside of the hard mode uh, achievement. It's probably not that difficult of, of a completion, but it has an auto pop as soon as you start the first game. So it's like, if you start playing this, you will unlock an achievement. There's no way getting getting around it. And also there's a bunch of easy achievements where just for just for playing the game and getting like, uh, hit combos and whatnot, you will just unlock achievements. Yeah. You'll you hit that 100 beat count with no with no problem. Oh, yeah. The 100 beat count, and then there's one for 500. Yeah. And it, it takes nothing to get that. Yeah, it's definitely... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a lot of anger reviews, like, oh, crap, now I have to play this? Uh, absolutely. But, like, if you don't care about the completions... And you have Game Pass. I'd give it a shot. I think it's good enough to at least give it a shot, especially if you do like the light gun arcade games. You will probably enjoy this for what it is. The cutscenes are nice. I mean, you know, it's it got a high good. production value. It's got a great high production value for the cutscenes and the art. It does. It's just it, he moves like a tank. You're just you're just slowly plodding forward and like turning and uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah coughing yeah. like a lot. Exactly. <laughs> you'll throw you'll throw your back out if you don't move at his pace so um yeah looking at the achievement list okay once again going back to something that we talked about last week about how microsoft should deal, deal with achievements 34 out of 49 achievements on this in this list are secret for no reason whatsoever because you don't want to spoil the game, Kenny. There's I'm no not, good. I'm not opposed Literally to that. Literally nothing. I'm not opposed to that. Because you can press select on the achievement on your Xbox and have it revealed to you. So if they want to put it under a secret tag and people don't want to look, eh, it's easy enough to know what it's about. Yes. I can understand that in most games. This game is not a game that you're going going for about the story. Most of the achievements, I shouldn't say most of them, I think there are 13 achievements, 13 or 14 of those achievements were for killing this person, kill that person, you know, just whatever boss Mm -hmm. it is. Maybe if you're like a hardcore gun grave person and you know all the lore, Mm -hmm. me telling you that you have to, you know, kill this person, spoil something, I doubt that. But then they have like secret achievements for perform 50 executions. That's not a secret achievement. You know, kill 100 people this certain way. That's not secret achievement worthy. At least not in my opinion anyway. That should just be that should just be there. That's fair. But yeah, like that's most of the achievements, you know, kill kill 10,000 enemies or whatever. Like quite Ooh. honestly, if you play through the game you will probably unlock most of these achievements and then, you know, you just go through and just kind of do a little bit of cleanup. I should mention there's a couple levels that are really annoying. Um, there's one where you're on a, you start off <clears throat> on a box that's kind of uh, being moved by chains. And uh, if you get knocked off that box, you have to start that section over again. Um, so, and, and in order to not get knocked off the box, you have to reflect missiles. So <laughs> that part kind of stunk. Uh, but I figured that out. And then shortly after that, there's a train mission. I was you wondering have to, if you were going to say that. That was the worst. It was horrible. It was horrible. So bad. But, but there, there's a nice cheat for the train, and it's in the solution. Mm-hmm. If you, um, yeah, when you get to a certain point on top of this train, it's, it's like, you know, it's like any train fight in a movie, right? 
there's going to be like mailboxes or you know the, the little mailbags things and stuff that are on top of the train the, these signs that as you're passing they'll knock over people uh well there's also like a, oh i'm going through a bridge uh uh you know so you have to get a bit into a little hollow uh before you pass over that bridge well um there's a point of no return on top of the, the train that if you don't cross that, you, you won't go to the bridge. So you can kind of edge up to that point. You can then from far away, shoot these little mines that pop up and knock you back and kind of make it really hard to get there in time before oh. you hit the bridge. So you stay back, you plank them, you kill all those, you kill all the people that are standing. And then you just kind of run forward and try to kill people really quickly so that you can get into the little hollow before you hit the bridge. It was really annoying. And oh, I was just that's like, are you such serious? a good tip. If you don't know that tip, like it's gonna, it's gonna be you're gonna you're gonna think it's impossible. I was doing that on easy. I don't know what that's gonna be like on hard. And and you know, thankfully I'm hearing about these these really good guns. So maybe it won't be bad then, but uh yeah. Uh so and, and there might be other gotchas. I, like I said. Maybe halfway through the game. Hopefully there aren't any more horrible levels like that. But uh, beware. Beware. Yeah. Overall, like I, like I said, it is not a bad game. I, I would even give it a shot. It's on Game Pass. Why not? But yeah, I don't know if I could say I'm going to even attempt to complete this. There's a couple of, more, of the more easier achievements. I might try going for that. Like Somehow I've not to blown up a thousand objects. I don't even know how that's possible. That almost sounds like it's stuck or something. Because like I shoot everything. I don't know how I could not have shot not have blown up a thousand things yet. Yeah, or, considering you have to play every level three times, you're gonna get that with no problem. Don't worry about oh, that. Oh yeah. Uh, why people are playing it, it's got nine thousand eight hundred and seventy one TA. Um oh so yeah, it's got a game pass spell. It's beefy. Well and that's and reflective that of that. Probably easy go down considering how easy it is. At the top. I'm sure a lot of people yes, 100%. just started it. I mean, 25-ish thousand starters is a lot for a game like this one. There's a lot on Game Pass that's a lot less than this, and, it, and I'm yeah. sure it all comes down to turn it on and it's on your tag. It's also the kind of thing, like, if you watch a trailer for this, it looks cool. Mm -hmm. You know, like Nate said, it's a really good-looking game. It's got high quality there. Yeah. But um yeah, I think that's all we got for Gungrave. Unless you guys got anything else you wanna mention or ask. All right. Well in that case, let's go to Michelle. I very much want to hear about this game. I know. I too played a brand new, very old game. The Oregon Trail. <laughs> so this uh, just came out this month, but this is uh, another reimagining of it. Uh, this version of the Oregon Trail, just like the most recent one I played, is also produced by Gameloft. So if you were a Windows Phone player and you played that version for achievements, it's the same publisher. So there are things that sort of look and feel similar, but really to the credit of Gameloft, they've done a lot with the Oregon Trail. So... They make a note right at the beginning that the game has sort of been updated to better reflect the uh, depictions of Native American characters within the game. There's now a journal where you unlock different like historical facts. As you're going through on the trail, you might see like a, a white That's bison cool. in the background and you click on it and that gets added to your journal. There's still all the typical trappings. You can go hunting. You'll find random you know bushes with berries or whatever else. But they've really modernized it. So at the beginning of your trek on the trail, you get your party of four. And unlike before where you just pick the banker and so you're the banker and that's it. Each individual of your in your party has a class and then they have two traits within that class. So, of course, because I knew I was recording tonight, I made a party with the four of us. Um, Al, uh -oh, you are no. a banker. Um, which is great because at some point I had to haggle for more money from my fish and you were able to do that. It was very appropriate. <laughs> um, Kenny, you're the missionary because of course you are. <laughs> I don't need to explain more about that. I'm the <laughs> That's hilarious. dim-witted adventurer because I try really hard. And uh, Kush, all that was left was farmer, so you got that one. Okay. <laughs> I'm Maryland. So, <laughs> so I'm not 100% sure 
if you can pick from more options what what i saw when i played is you get to pick your initial class which was one of six and then for the other three characters you pick from three characters that are available and all of this stuff matters so different character classes have different things that they're more capable of doing so like i mentioned before l haggled so that i got two dollars per fish instead of one dollar per fish um Koosh, as the farmer, when I went across a wagon and that had broken down, you were able to remove a wheel from it without the wagon collapsing on you. But there's also your kind of character traits. And as I mentioned before, I'm a dim-witted adventurer. So you find a bush. And great, as the dim-witted adventurer, I should know how to de- de- determine if whatever I'm getting from this thing can heal us or hurt us. So yes, I was able to do that. I went to this this bush and I picked the berries and I knew the berries were medicinal, but I was hungry and I ate them. So instead of getting three medicine, we only got one. So it has all these neat trappings that actually sort of update the gameplay that you have to think about who you're sending in to hunt because Love it. the person with the hunting ability um, will get you more meat, will be more effective with their use of bullets. And then there are other things that come throughout the game that affect your morale. So one example that happened, um, let me step back real quick. Each character has four um, stats. There's health, which you understand. So, for example, with health, uh, there was one evening, apparently, somebody in our traveling party, I'm not going to point fingers, but it was like the the banker, didn't know how to store a gun (laughs) properly. And, well, Kush accidentally discharged the gun and, you know, he took a couple hit points of damage. So there's health. But he's fine. He got better. Hmm. Um, there's stamina, so how much your characters can move. There's morale, so if your character gets morale that's too low, they will just run away from the party, but I haven't played long enough for that to have happened yet. But if things go the way that they keep going, I'm going to be the one that does that. And, um, I don't remember the fourth one offhand, but as you go through the game, you need to keep these things high enough so that the party stays together and keeps going through. And each class has things that they're better at helping with. So the the missionary helps with um, morale because he reads from the good book and everyone feels better about that. Uh, you know, that's how they position it within the game. And it's, it's actually cool. Like insofar as updating Oregon Trail, which I'm sure we've all played a million times. Oh yeah. Uh, just these extra elements are actually like, they're engaging they're interesting you don't just walk straight along the trail they break the trail into five kind of larger components and then within those larger components you then play another set of smaller ones and you can pick which paths you go on there's fishing that you can do throughout there's hunting obviously trading as i've already mentioned when you trade you can haggle with people and sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't um there are as i touched on before random things so in my game uh, Kenny, actually, you found some turtle eggs, and I had a decision to make. Do we take the turtle eggs for food or not? So I said, let's take it. We're on the trail. And Koosh felt bad about this, so he actually lost morale. Oh, wow. So it's... Well, Koosh was looking for chub eggs. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's... Chub eggs, but yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> I did. I did not expect much out of this because it's game loft it's oregon trail but they really did some cool stuff there are weekly challenges that you can do there are different like adventures you can do so um one new element of the game is once you go hunting you can also skin the animals that you hunt so you can get pelts you can use pelts to caulk the wagons so when you go to cross a river that increases your chances of successfully doing that Huh. When you play the game initially, it tells you, you could be more successful at this if you had a knife, you unlock the knife by playing this journey. So it encourages you to go through and try different paths and go through different elements, because as you go through those different paths, you open up different things. Each path has little uh, tasks you can do, like make sure to find 10 pounds of meat. And if you do that, you get a medicine. So it's it's pretty good. That's the- cool only real negative with it is the price they're asking thirty dollars for this yeah i was looking at that and it's like i said it's good i'm enjoying it it's only on pc at the moment and that's really where it fits it it 
wouldn't convert super well to a controller. But $30 is a lot to ask for any version of Oregon Trail. And and that's yeah, a shame. Yeah, I agree. If it gets on sale for even, I'd say, 10 or lower, I would totally recommend this. Because it hits all the right nostalgia notes for people who grew up playing it. But it, 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 they just, they did just enough to keep it more engaging. So, like, I don't know how much you guys remember from playing it, but one of the early stops you go to is um, this rock where travelers would carve their name into it. And if you oh, yeah. choose to carve your name into that rock, it actually raises your party's morale. So it actually has an impact on you. So decisions you make throughout the game will impact this in sort of subtle ways. And once again, as those things diminish your party will be affected. So I've been having a good time with it. I Again, the price is, is a lot. This would be such a perfect Game Pass game and would be awesome if it was on cloud and you could play it on your phone. That's not oh, where it is man. right now. Uh, and I don't know that it would be there, uh, but it's... I never really thought about Oregon Trail being updated in any sort of way that would make it more of a robust sort of experience but they did a good job so uh if it gets down to that ten dollar or so mark i would definitely check it out one other note with uh achievements actually i've only got two achievements in the game so far there's a tutorial achievement and then there's an achievement for making like your first big um landmark so you actually can play this a little bit without it immediately getting on your tag it plays very much like oregon trail there's really nothing too new there the achievements seem to be centered a lot around getting to certain points, but also hitting certain collectible milestones. So like I mentioned before, as you're going along the trail, you'll occasionally see animals flashing in the background. And that just means you can click on them and collect them for experience points. But they also get added to a journal. So there are achievements attached to finishing certain percentages of the journal. Uh, so I haven't looked at the list too carefully, but there seems to be it, it encourages you to do multiple playthroughs to get through everything. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, thumbs up on the game generally. I, I've enjoyed it. I'm, I'm looking forward to actually getting into some more once we're done recording. And yeah, I'll really update you guys on how you pass. do. Like, who actually makes oh, yes, it across please do. the trail. Yeah. It's super funny because the three of us are struggling and Elle's just at the front of the wagon. Like, yeah, everything's cool. All my stuff is full. That so sounds it's, so real. It's really... So reflective of real life. <laughs> Am I being carried? Mm -hmm. But but again, you you got us more money on our fish, so got to give credit. though. Yeah. Well, again. Yeah. Yeah, and if do you think you'd enjoy it as much if you didn't have the nostalgia, or I, you know, I'm not sure. I it's 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 hard to answer that question, obviously. Um, but I think so, and I think I. Also, as just sort of a piece of learning something through history. Now, obviously, it's still a game that's primarily aimed at a younger audience. It's going to be kid friendly. It's not really going to get like, yes, these characters will all die of dysentery and otherwise preventable diseases this day. But <laughs> it's not uh, it's not in a gruesome sort of sense. Right. But there's still there's a value in like that was kind of the hook about being allowing us to play it in school when I was in elementary school. Is, oh, it's educational. It's about the Oregon Trail. Then there's still that, and there's more of it because it, it goes into more detail there. I think, I think if I was a you know late thirty, early forty something gamer playing this now with no other context, would be like, well, it's cute, but whatever. But if I was the same age now as I was when I was playing Oregon Trail as a child, and I was first experiencing this, I th I think I would still really enjoy it and kind of grow up with the nostalgia goggles for it. I will say I'm looking at some of the screenshots. I really like the way that they update it, like art wise. Yeah, they did. They did a nice job, and they reuse a lot of assets. So when you go from town to town to town, you'll see the same generic farmer-looking dude, and he's got a different name at every town. Uh, that's look. That's not a surprise. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. It doesn't really. I was actually just going to ask about that. Oh yeah. So, like, when you pick a banker, for example, mm -hmm. can you pick the way? You look. So that's actually, I was starting to touch on that before and I got distracted from the point. You pick your first character based on class and then they sort of give you three options for your next one and then three options and then three options. 
I don't know if they only give you three options or if you can refresh them because I just picked from what was available. But within those three options, characters will sometimes look different. So they'll have different cover- colored clothing or they'll have different skin tones. I didn't see a way to customize that yourself, but the game definitely accounts for that. And you can only have four people? Yes. I'm pretty sure it used to be five. No, I'm... Yeah, I... I, I don't remember that. I don't remember. Actually, because it was... I thought it was sort of understood. It was like mom, dad, son, daughter was the group for the Oregon Trail. But now I don't remember. I could not tell you. I have no idea on that. It's been way too long since I played it. Right. But I do remember from playing it as a youth that you would pick your one character class and everyone picked Banker because you had money to for, to, to afford fairies. Uh, but the, the Banker's special skill in this one is just that he gets 50 more silver and and again he's he's got uh the ability to haggle better but other characters can try to and if a character successfully haggles they will improve improve in that skill space so there is some rng there you know because you'll try to do things and and you'll fail at it and that happens but if your character succeeds they're going to gain points in that stat category so in the future like there's um a stat category for uh that helps where if you get lost, right? You know how you lose the trail and you lose eight days, but you get to pick one of your characters to try to get you back on the trail. So you lose less time. And so it could be any character you try that with one type is going to be better, but they can all try it. And if that character succeeds, they're going to gain a point in that stat category because, Hey, they succeeded at it. So they must have some idea. Cool. Yeah. I, I really hope this comes a game pass. I wish it wasn't I would thirty dollars. Try this, but yeah, yeah, that's thirty dollar price tag, man. Yeah, I know. Like harping on the cost on is, is not, uh, you know, not something we try to do too terribly much for good reason. It's just too much. It is just too much for this game. If this was coming out at five, get it now. It's, oh my it's gosh, they have so many sales. Worth it if for this that. was a five dollar game, but uh, it's just too much. Yeah, there's 16 people on TA that are, that are tracked. <coughs> yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. And <laughs> I'm sure that's because of the price. Exactly. This was a 5 or $10 game. I'm sure they'd have thousands of sales by now. Or if it was streamable to cloud. Because being able to play it on your phone on the or go that. is a perfect environment for it. Oh, man. You put, you put this on Game Pass... And then uh, in- include touch controls. I'm mm-hmm. in. Yeah. This will make getting those uh, casual game completions way more difficult because I would love to play this on my phone. All right. But uh, yeah. If you guys don't have anything else to say on Oregon Trail, then let's get into some sales. Uh, I think these kind of suck. <laughs> and considering Nate's yep. the only one that has anything written <laughs> down, and he only has two games or three games, uh, Nate, what, what would you like to recommend out from these slim pickings? Yeah, it's, a, whew, it's rough. It's a rough one. Uh, let's start off with the cheapest one: uh, Cyber Pool, one dollar and twenty-four cents down from five. Uh, this is a sports Q sports game. Uh, it has a time estimate of half an hour to one hour. Uh, just because it's so cheap, uh, I had to mention it. it looked kind of interesting. The levels, it's not just a, a pool table. Uh, the levels change or the tables change. They have different shapes and obstacles and things like that. So it looks kind of interesting. You know, might might be good for holding your attention for a half an hour to an hour. Uh, and lastly, it seems weird to say that uh, after only two. Uh, lastly, Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood. Now, I seem to remember people panning this and just making fun of it. Uh, I watched some video of this. I watched a gameplay of it. It looks kind of cool. Uh, and at the this price, $10 down from 50 that seems like that's the right price for me to go in and check it out based on what I've seen. Uh, it's action, adventure, and stealth. 12 to 15 hour estimate. It's got 3.3 stars. So I don't know why I was thinking this thing got laughed at so much. Um I'm not sure. Maybe maybe I'm confusing games. Uh, there is an Xbox One version and a series version. 
If you bought this Oof. a long time ago, when it first came out, there was a period where they'd let you upgrade to the series version. That that deal is passed. You can't do it. You'd have to buy it. Both versions are on sale right now for $10. I think by the time this podcast airs, uh, I'm not sure if they're still going to be on sale. But uh, if it ever does drop down to that price again, I'll check it out. It, it looks interesting uh, for that price point. And that's Werewolf the Apocalypse Earthblood. It looks something. I was surprised to see this because I'm familiar with the tabletop game of Werewolf the Apocalypse. And so, uh, you know, just seeing the title. Of that. It was panned. Hmm? hmm. Like, it, just seeing the title. I thought it was also uh, panned. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, just seeing the title, I immediately thought it would be something kind of based around, like, being a tabletop game, but... Uh, I guess that's not so uncommon. You'll take something like Warhammer and it becomes a like an action adventure type game. But uh Yeah, this is definitely action y. Um it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of um board game mechanics to it. Uh, it you know, you're you're kind of in, infiltrating this base at the very beginning of the game. You're talking to um your party members. It just seems kinda of like a you know, like an Assassin's Creed almost. Um like early Assassin's Creed. because uh, you're stealthing up behind people, you're taking them down. Uh, you're getting into the base by, you know, transforming into a wolf instantly. Uh, and you go in the base, you, you take out this guy, and then it gets to a point where, you know, everybody, everyone knows you're there, so you just totally werewolf out. And <laughs> then it's a hack and slash, and you're just beating the smack out of everything. And the blood spatters. Oh, my gosh. Like, <laughs> it, looks, it looks really cool. That's, so I'm, like, into it. I'm, like, I want to get to that part where I'm just, like, throwing bodies, picking people up and ragdolling them. All right, uh, I'll that, watch a clip. Yeah, yeah. you got to watch a clip. Watch, nah. yeah. I'll, I'll send you a link to the to the to this playthrough that this guy did. It's on PlayStation. Um, it looks like it's worth 10 bucks to me. That's all I'm saying. I'm so curious. Like, in, in the tabletop okay, so I really like you, board I games. see why you think this looks cool. Like, in the tabletop Sorry, Michelle, game. Okay. No, it's okay. There's a whole mechanic. Like, you're not supposed to in the tabletop game that this is universe is from, I imagine. You're not supposed to just go around turning into a werewolf. Like, there's a whole thing about, like, you don't do that because it has these other effects. So I'm curious how the game actually uses that out. I wonder with some of this where it's getting panned of stuff, like, like maybe it's people who are familiar with the source material and weren't happy how they converted that into what may be just sort of a gen generic action-y game. Maybe it's not actually a problem with the gameplay. It possibly. It might have something there, yeah. I like it from the action perspective, um, just because I'm not familiar with the tabletop. Mm -hmm. So, frick, this clip looks cool. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. You know what? You know what? And I might, I might sell you on this, Nate. This okay. is giving me some strong X Men Wolverine vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, okay, this looks cool. <laughs> Mom, yeah, ten from yeah. fifty. Maybe I'll play this really talk about it. Great sale. Soon. So. Wait, 10 yep. from 50? Yeah. 10 That's down from 50? 50? Jeez. These are, yes, this is why I felt like I had to talk about this one, especially when uh, the list is not great this week. Yeah, don't look like no $50 game. <laughs> well, right. It isn't for this um, week only. Okay, fair point. Uh, let's see. Games of Gold. So we did have... Some game is uh, or blah, 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 blah. let me try that again. We did have our December games announced, um, from December 1st to the 31st. You can download Colt Canyon, which is a roguelike shoot 'em up. Uh, yep, and then from December 16th to January 15th, you can download Bladed Fury, which is a beat 'em up. And apparently we have streamed this, and you can check out our stream on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Achievement Hunting 101. We got about 90 minutes of gameplay there if you want to check it out. But, I mean, either way, download it. It's free. Why not? It has Add to it be. to the collection of games that you'll never play. A new strategy for how they're handling this. Because on TA, which is obviously not the entirety of Xbox... But in some ways, it's a good bar because these these are gamers on the site, right? It's not a whole bunch of casual people who've never heard of this, that, and the other. The one, the first game, Colt Canyon, has only been 
tracked by like 200 people and bladed fury has only been tracked by 300 people and they're not new cult of canyon came out in 2020 bladed fury came out in 2021 so i'm beginning to wonder if this is part of the strategy now with games with gold going forward is we're, we're not gonna see that sort of big level marquee game they're trying to get that into game pass more like but they're trying to use this to highlight smaller games because the fact that they're so similar in terms of tracking on ta is really fascinating to me i mean i think it's a bold strategy playstation comes swing in with like you know call of duty and god of war and stuff like that and here we're getting colt cannon and bladed fury well, see what yeah, PlayStation does and doing the complete opposite. But Game Pass versus PlayStation streaming service is a no contest. So, oh, I know. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm, I'm only kidding. Oh, okay. Because I like. Eh, I if you look know. at last, no, it's ga- you... games of gold. It's it was four games. Now it's two games. Either way, it's free games. By no means am I signing up for Xbox Gold to get these free games. It is just a small benefit. I'm thankful for whatever I get. Yeah. Uh, so last month's games, the Praetorians has 368 starts. Uh, that, and that's after it's been in Game Pass. That's sorry, all it games still gold has. For the whole month. Uh, and then Dead End Job uh, has uh, 6,000. So uh, it would be interesting to to have looked back at the stats because that looks like the more approachable game to me uh, for, for this past month. But uh, yeah, you got an interesting point there, Matriarch, uh, with the uh, the the numbers that they're picking and let's see what happens in the new year uh <clears throat> i think that they could just drop the games uh in the new year nobody like be might be heading that way uh so we'll see well, that's, i i think that's exactly it like they, they want to try train all of us to not be looking forward to this announcement every month just just keep looking for the they're doing twice a, damn a month good job game pass announcements that's really where all the big things are going to be so yeah i i this is all by design yeah I, and if if they were to take everybody, and by everybody I mean probably the one and a half people that are working on Games of Gold, and send them over to to the Game Pass crew, and any time and effort that gets put into Games of Gold goes to Game Pass, I would be very happy. Mm-hmm. If Games of Gold goes away, I'm not gonna be sad. Yep. Well, I will because I'm losing free games. But in all honesty, like how many Games of Gold do games that we really play? Right, especially stop, if these are stop. what. Don't make me think what's about in there. My practices. At least three. <laughs> <laughs> At least three. Halo, Halo, Assassin's Creed, and Civ Rev. There's been three games that I've played. I know for sure. <laughs> well, of these four, Bladed Fury is um, a game. I mean, Cole Canyon's a roguelike, so and this shoot 'em up, so that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. And then, speaking of Game, Ca- Game Pass, we got podcasted as the use, so we have no new announcements. However, available now in Game Pass is Insurgency Sandstorm for the cloud and console. Uh, 20 to 25 hour first person shooter, if that's, if that's something you like. Uh, we have Soccer Story, cloud console on PC. Apparently this is Available day one with Game Pass, so that's cool. It's a physics-driven or adventure RPG. Yeah, I think right. uh, Dodgeball Academia, but with soccer. Yes. And then also uh, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide on the PC version. But uh, yeah, next week we will come out swinging with the new Game Pass news, I expect it to be pretty good. And I expect that because it's always good. Game Pass is phenomenal. But uh, yeah, with that, let's get into Brad Camp. Go ahead, Michelle. In completions, TA Legend Shots has reached 150 completed games. Scarovis, Scaro, Scarovisi, but Scaro, good dude, um, has reached 350 completed games. <laughs> Dream Hole at 400 completed games, Septic Earl with 500 completed games, What the Fug with 600 completed games, and Fighter Chip has reached 650 completed games. Congratulations, everyone. 
Pin Streaks, Boots Ryan, and What the Fug share the 100 day honors. Domain with 250 days, Retro Chief 1969 with 700 days, It's a Live X with 800 days, Morbid 237 with 1,250, Enigma Gamer 77 with 1,450 days, and Bastion Reader with 1,800 days. Celebrating their two year achievement win streak milestone is Dynaman 87. In Gamer Score, uh, Fuaf and It's Alive. X have both hit 200,000 gamer score. Septic Girl has hit 950,000 gamer score. Northern Lass has hit 1.2 million gamer score. Magic Monkey Eye has hit 1.6 million gamer score. And Thrash Forever has hit 2.2 million gamer score. All right. And that uh, Septic Girl just uh, joined the Discord today. So nice. welcome aboard. Nice. Nice. And he uh, PM'd me saying I was his favorite host. In leaderboard. <laughs> by seven. <laughs> by 571. It's now in the top 10 Wisconsin Gamer Score leaderboard for music. Ooh. Awesome. And Fug is definitely number 972. Death Dealers is in the top 50 of the Ohio Gamer Score leaderboard for simulation. Cool. Playing boring games, Vicky. Domain is in the top 20 of the Washington Gamer Score leaderboard for vehicular combat. That sounds way more funner. M's Fergie is in the top 200 of the Scotland TA leaderboard. Lucas, 1987, is now in the top 10 of the completed games leaderboard for Windows. That's crazy. NBA Kirkland is now in the top five of the Washington Max Possible Completion Percentage leaderboard for competitive ratio. And our good friend Neo21X is in the top 500 of the California Achievements Completed Percentage Leaderboard for Vayners. What? Come on, man. You should be in the top 10 at this point. You're Mr. Vayner. You run our Vayners channel, and you're going to pick out a good game of the month for December that we will be podcasting on. Actually, yes. That usually accompanies the live podcast when you listen to it after the fact. Hopefully it's something good and not that Star Wars game everyone keeps wanting. There you go. <laughs> Yay. We got one out. And brags. Nobody tag me. You suck. <laughs> okay, then. All right. Well, that will do it for us this week. Be sure to follow us on all the socials and whatnot. Join the Discord, discord.io slash h101. And come check us out on Twitch this coming Tuesday as it is the first Tuesday of the month. So that means it will be a live show. We will have some ducky races and all kinds of shenanigans. Uh, Twitch TV that wait, twitch.tv slash h101. And last but not least, we do want to thank our patrons. All, all of those that are able to support us each week, we greatly appreciate you. If you can donate, we would greatly appreciate it. Patreon.com slash Achievement Hunting 101. But with that, thank you for listening. Class is dismissed. See you all next week for the live show. I think Devin's going to drink something hot. Oh, yeah. Something spicy. Yeah. And something about a peppermint pickle. Oh, oh, yeah, that sounds uh, horrible. You should totally watch it. He's going to pick up pickle, pecker, pecker, uh, pecker, pecker, peppermint. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, he's going to eat something crazy for the live show because everyone, uh, some good extra life. Thank you for everyone who donated. And he's mm-hmm. going to be joining us live. And there's going to be ducky races. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey. Song? Rated M for Mature. Hi there, it's Chewy on Ice, and I am back with a very long overdue segment with the community challenge maestro, Mr. Freemhall. Freemhall, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Mr. Baca. Yourself? 
Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, as I said, this is a long overdue catch up. I think we intended to have a quarterly catch up, mm-hmm. uh, which we did do back in, I want to say, kind of March, April time. That was yep. great. And then it's now been seven months. Yeah, you know, the seventh, eighth check in, you know. Sure. Maybe it's, even more. Uh, than that. It's longer than we intend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've, I mean, uh, I think life and time zones uh, have got in our way. But we're back right before the end of the year to discuss, to catch up on, probably finally, the Freemhole Completion Challenge, which is a challenge set by yourself, Mr. Freemhole. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't need to tell you this. I'm telling the people listening, obviously. For completing games throughout the year, according to various criteria, uh, and various, well, multiple challenges, actually. Uh, the main one is also incorporated, as a lot of people will know, into the BCM, the Better Completions Matter Challenge as well. And this is just kind of a casual thing that you do, um, and anyone is kind of up for participating. Right. And as I said, we were kind of intending to do a, a regular checkpoint, um, but it has been less regular than we intended. But here we are. We're back. Well, you know what? It's at the end of the year, and uh, we're kind of reflecting on... How we did over this year, uh, you know, we were kind of talking a little bit before this whole thing. I, I think I gave you a little bit of crap last year with just shovelware that you put in there. Um, but how are you looking on this year's list? I shoveled that where right where it would go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in previous years, when I've completed the challenge, which I have done every uh, year that, that I've been involved in. So I think I've done it three years previous to this year. Okay. Uh, I have been very proud of myself for completing your challenge. Um, but I have done so by yeah just shoveling in all of the junk. Uh, this year is the first year that I am also participating in the Better Completions Matter challenge and and as part of that uh, there is a minimum of a 1.2 ratio cutoff so you can't uh, use any of those uh, crappy games those those um, easy gamer score games against any of the challenges so i thought you know what i'll, I'll stick to that uh, yeah. and i will use that criteria uh, myself uh, for this particular challenge so so of your is it four challenges that you do the one in the BCM, yes. um, I'm sticking to the the 1.2, but the other three, I'm still shoveling in that shovel. Where? <laughs> How about you? Uh, you know, same thing. Exactly, exactly that. Mm. That uh, you know, that 1.2 really does limit a lot of a lot of the games that, that oh, you yeah. can do. Um, <laughs> And even some where, you know, you got to play with how, you know, if you're not going to get that uh, Game Pass bump uh, or that's kind of right on that hover, y- y- the fact that you complete the game might actually push that ratio below uh, where you can actually use it. That's happened to me on one one occasion here. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, actually, for as far as it goes this year, in terms of the Freemholes Completions Challenge, the, the main 30, um, I'm I'm three away. Uh, I, I, there's a chance. Wow. There's a mm, chance right. I can finish it. Um, but chasing chasing Game Pass has been really uh, putting a, a thorn in the the side of getting these things completed because you just spend so much time in the last few weeks mm. of the month uh, or each you know half month trying to finish games that maybe don't necessarily fit into here. But mm-hmm. so yeah, so I'm three away. I'm I'm much much worse off than you. I think I probably got about maybe a half, maybe two thirds of it done. Okay. Um, some of them I've really struggled with, but also I have to say, I haven't like been aggressively pursuing it. And I've done this typical thing where like I'm scrambling for December to see sure. what I can find for some of these challenges. And I, I feel like I'm probably not going to make it because I can't, in some of them, I literally can't find a good fit. And, and that's right. maybe because there's they, they are few and far between, or it might just be my collection, or, or I've already done, you know, a few of the ones that would fit in previous years. Absolutely. I think we should talk about some of those. The one, I want to touch on one first, because the way that I presented it, uh, it's called Palindrome. And it's where you complete a game whose title has a palindrome in the title. And for the BCM, though, they sw- he switched that, uh, Iron Fist, to make it where there was an achievement that had a palindrome. And so I actually completed a game with a palindrome. Uh, I just so happened to do OVO, O-V-I-O-V-O, mm. or whatever. And I submitted that as, uh, hey, you know, here's my palindrome, right? It's a, like the, the word itself is a palindrome. 
And he denied it. He's like, no, 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 no. I changed it so titles don't count anymore. Uh, so I had to resubmit for the BCM for that one. Um, so which did you take? Did you find a game that had a palindrome in it or did you use the I, achievement one? Uh, so I do. I have one game that has a title uh, in it, uh, which is Solos. S-O-L-O-S. Oh, okay, yep. So for a title, that would count. Uh, but I do have a couple of achievement ones because the word I mm-hmm. is quite a useful achievement uh, ne- palindrome that I've managed to use. And, and in particular, the one I've got here is it's a tricky one. Umurangi Generation Special Edition, okay. uh, which was a game in which you take photos and as part of that, uh, that you complete challenges and by completing challenges, you collect new lenses for your photos. And one of those lenses is a fish eye, okay. uh, which is the name of the achievement. So the eye there uh, got me it. So I've got, I've got options there, right? If, <laughs> if, if the title had been accepted, I, I would have gone with solos, but, but Umurangi gets me the achievement. Nice. Yeah, I, mine also uses the palindrome eye. Uh, Dandara Trials of Fear Edition has the... Uh, word I E Y E in it, of course, um, and that, that's that's the word. I, level also works uh, is a pretty common. Mm, level is a good one. Pretty common. Yeah, one, although but. level is one that I mostly found throughout the many many shovelware games that I have. Hundred percent. Level one, 100%. level two, level three, level four. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's quite a few uh, here as well that I found uh, kind of a mixed mixed bag here because uh, we had a few challenges around the the names of developers and publishers. Sure. Uh, I found two of them very easy and one of them less easy. <laughs> so uh, we had uh, Entertainer of the Year, which was a developer or publisher with the word entertainment in. And, and that yep. entertainment comes up a few times. So I've got Bandai Namco Entertainment. Okay. Uh, I've got Get, Get Even. I've also got uh, Daedalic Entertainment, who sure. does a lot of the um, point and click games. So I've got Deponia, Silence. I've got I've got options there, a few options. So that's actually um, one I haven't done. Um, oh, the, okay. the plan was to do Respawn Entertainment and finally finish uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is why I keep pushing for it to be the Vayner of the Month. Um, I'm, at, <laughs> I'm at Endgame in that. Uh, and so really it's going to all the planets and cleaning everything up. So I, I, that one's still probably on the list to be done, uh, but mm. not, not quite yet. So the other one uh, was Ultimate Interactivity, which was similar. So d- developer or publisher, but with the word interactive in the name. So I've got Annapurna Interactive mm-hmm. uh, as a publisher for Kentucky Route Zero uh, TV edition. Uh, but I've also got a backup option with uh, Disney Interactive Studios, who did Star Wars Force Unleashed 2. So th- those two I've got like options for. Yeah. Um, the one I'm struggling with is actually uh, the word team. Now, I do have one, uh, just the one, and that is I have the medium, uh, so Bloober team, right? Oh, sure. Um, but my issue is that I have the medium against a couple of other options. So, <laughs> right, right. You know, you've got to pick and choose what you can use. So my... I have to commit the medium to team uh, yep. uh, and, then, and, then, and then use something else for other things. My interactive was Mahjong by Microsoft, which I think was developed by Behavior Interactive. And then um, To Who Luna Knights, or Tao Hao, is that what we're saying? Tao Hao Luna to, Knights? To Who. To, to, to whatever it is. They are a, a team. And so I used that one. Obviously, that was a, mm. a chasing Game Pass completion right there, I think. What was that, back in February? Um, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, back yeah. in February. So, you know, sometimes it works in your favor, um, not not all the time, but the ones that I still don't have, like I said, the Entertainer of the Year, uh, the other two are Ahizo K, that, that is a title that contains both the letters Y and, uh, and Z or Z. Um, I've been eyeballing, there's either Kentucky Route Zero or yeah, Crazy yeah. Taxi are the two that I'm looking at for mm-hmm. that one. Crazy Taxi is a bit of a skill difficulty thing for me. <laughs> I mean, I have like two achievements <laughs> left in it, but I have to relearn how to play that game and mm. all those special uh, level things. And then the other one is Ska Core, where it's a title who contains the vowel pair O-I. Um, this one I've eyeballed Family Mysteries 2. Uh, it has the word poisonous in it. 
And so those are the three games that I I'm, I'm, uh-huh. would love to be able to get done in the month of December and put a bow on this. But again, yeah, Game Pass is a, is a fickle mistress. <laughs> yeah, so I've got uh, Kentucky Route Zero as my uh, high OK, you know, uh, Y and X option if... Uh, I'm able to free it from being my interactive option, if that makes sense. <laughs> yep. Um I, I, it makes you know there are so ma- there are so few options for the Z and Y uh, letters yep. that you know it, it kind of has to be that. I think um, I have nothing for the OI option <laughs> and scrambling. Yeah, I mean, I guess Family Mysteries would be an option for me as well. I, I do have all the Artifacts Monday games, so that yep. could do it. And it's nice um, that it's like I think the first one that you're that's available to us so like you wouldn't yeah i mean not that necessarily you need continuity in the story but it does happen to be the first mm. one in the series so that's nice yes yeah, uh, weirdly enough i jumped straight to three on on another challenge that i was doing so uh i don't think the continuity matters in, the, <laughs> in those games particularly um you know they are all pretty much the same game <laughs> anyway they're all remakes of each other right uh, right in terms of the letter ones i yeah so those are the ones i struggled on uh that one in particular the 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 the, the one that's uh i am the namesake for for chewy right oh nice uh i've got plenty of options for there's lots of ch games uh well let's see what i've got here i've got hitchhiker I've okay. got uh, Purple Chicken Spaceman. I've got Gravity Chase. Uh, so, yeah, plenty of choices there. No problem. Which is funny because that one, to me, was like a, like at the very end. Like I just recently got that one with my mm. BCM Game of the Month completion, um, Spy Chameleon. So, oh, so yeah, that, nice. that's the only one I've ever had. Ooh, but that's not. Does a silent ch, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> I think it has to be a ch sound. I think <laughs> it's not uh, the letter of the law, but you know, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but it most certainly and uh, has the two. what was it? I before e uh, one. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if I'm correct in saying this, I'm just scanning through now. I I have no options for that one either. So I'm drawing a blank on the Wackapail I before yeah. e, except in Wackapail because um, I have nothing. King's heir rise to the throne is the one I used. Another artifacts so Monday another type artifacts game. Another artifacts one. Yep. And actually, that's a good point because I have that one half complete because I was. Um, derping that one so oh, like sure. earlier in the year that was one of my derp games the artifacts monday ones were great for derping so totally could wrap totally that one up yeah. and i typically like again that's a k right so for the gamer tag challenge for each month k's are pretty tough to come by so i tend to like slow bleed that one as well and <laughs> and this this one actually was also a bcm game of the month for me so uh again the the cross pollination of contests which is one of the more fun things that we like to do but that was tough too. That was hard to find. Hmm. Yeah. So, so uh, one of the ones that I've drawn a blank on, but not because I don't have any. It's just because I don't know if I don't have any. <laughs> is sure. uh, the game from a Canadian developer? So blame Canada, and that's only because I haven't I haven't done the research <laughs> yet. Yep. Because I literally have to go through every single game I've completed and say, are they Canadian? Are they Canadian? Are they Canadian? <laughs> so you don't uh, do that, like effort. when you. When you initially complete a game, you don't go through and check and check all the boxes of where this thing fits, because that's how I found mine. I do for most of them, the ones that stand sure. out. But for some reason, that one I've just been putting off. That's funny. <laughs> because that's gonna take different. a while. Because I'm trying yeah, to it's... think how I found mine. Mine was the Microsoft Ultimate Word Games, and again, I was thinking it was just clicking on things and saying, um, "Where are you from again?" Yeah. <laughs> But thankfully, that was like, I think that was my first completion of the entire year. Yeah, it was. Uh, just because right. it happened to be okay. the bronze, right? So I was going to take the the lazy option on this and maybe even a few others and see what other people submitted. <laughs> there you makes, go. Uh, any there sense. you go. So I'm actually looking at the sheet now because there are already submissions in here, right? So let's see what we get here. Blame that Canada. actually saved me on uh, the on one of my other ones, which after you find a Canadian one that, that sticks mm-hmm. out to you, maybe I'll, uh, I'll fill you in on. Okay, I have completed none of the games that people have submitted for Canada yet. So I am going to have to work my way through the list and try and 
dig out something. If anyone has yeah. any, uh, uh, you know, time to spare and wants to look at the list of games I've completed and cross-reference it to Canadian developers, then I will really appreciate that. That's funny. I, um, so the one where I used the... Because you, you're talking about the BCM list of submissions. Um, yes. Is, uh, yeah, Iron Fist has collated uh, what people have been submitting over the year. Obviously, you don't have to submit anything until the very end of the year, but... Um, just to, you know, as things get knocked off the list, you might as well. And I was struggling with the one where we're going, we don't need roads. And that was mm. completing a game that has a land traversal vehicle that does not touch the ground. And I was like, I don't even know, like, what has a hover bike or what has, like, I couldn't <laughs> even think of anything. And I checked that list and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge was on there. I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that, you know, one level where you're flying the little helicopter thing or mm-hmm. the or the hover skateboards is another level. And it's like, that's perfect because it yeah. doesn't apply to anything else for me. So for me on that one, uh, I got lucky very early in the year and I got Bleeding Edge. So uh, Bleeding sure. Edge is the, uh, the kind of hero shooter game. Uh, but in that, you can swap from running to jumping on these, like, yeah, hoverbikes, uh, basically. Or hoverboards, sorry. Hoverboards, basically. Uh, you know, Back to the Future 2 style. Uh, so that works pretty well for that. I also got <laughs> Race with Ryan because um, even though it's a kind of kart racer game, some of the vehicles you can pick from are technically hovering instead of... Oh, that's wheels. funny. Yeah. And, and similarly, uh, there's a game called Gravity Chase... Mm-hmm. Uh, which is a racing game, but it's kind of like uh, Pod Racer or the old Wipeout games. Uh, sure, from yep. back in the old PlayStation. So, so they're like hover, hovering. I don't know vehicles. <laughs> they, they don't. They don't actually uh, touch the ground. So, so right. that works pretty right. well for the. It's for probably that. magnets or something. I'm sure. It seems like yeah, a future magnets thing. and lasers and <laughs> the future. It uses the power of the future to fly. Yeah, yeah, which is um, as, as how it works. So there's also a few here relating to animals. Okay, um, you have got games where you are uh, able to hunt. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was lucky. I, I had Assassin's Creed Origins there, where you're able to use the kind of the the animals that you can kill uh, to your advantage. Right. Uh, that was easy. That was fine. Uh, games where they have animals, but the animals cannot be killed uh, is an interesting one. Because you kind of have to think about games where they have like background animals that you can't necessarily right. interact with or kill. Um, now, what did I put down for that? I have currently got... Well, it's a bit of a stretch. I've got Quest for Infamy, which is um, a kind of a, a, an adventure game, a kind of a role-playing-ish adventure game. And it, there yep. are horses in that. You don't can't kill the horses, okay. uh, but they are very background. I don't know. It's a bit of a stretch. We'll Mine see. is uh, yeah. Rain on Your Parade, where Ooh. there's just actually no killing in that game, but you can harass animals um, by raining on them. Um, mm, so. Interesting. Maybe I could use that because that's on my yep. list as well. Because it does have weapons as well. There, you know, the 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 cloud can mm. pick up weapons, and there's dudes walking around with guns and stuff. So, yeah. So that yes. that had uh, that was my Peter would be proud. The coonskin cap, the hunting one. I used Borderlands Three, which is, I mean, mm. that you just you harvest everything in that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, you, uh, there's also the game for riding an animal, and I used uh, I used Omno for that, which was another mm-hmm. Game Pass chase. Uh, in that, it's a very peaceful game. Yep. Um, there's a lot of creatures. There's a there's a bestiary in that one as well, so that one's good for a bestiary. Um, for Omno the, was my teeny tiny, uh, which is the game mm-hmm. whose title is five letters or less. Yeah, see, that's an option for me as a backup for that. So I have to decide whether to use that for... But I think it's the only one I have with rideable animals, maybe. Sure. Oh, no, Flynn, uh, Son of Crimson. That's Flynn, Son of Crimson because, is the one I'm doing. Yeah. Mm. yeah, and, yeah. and then Animal with Stripes, um, Monster Sanctuary. I uh, recompleted that with the new title update that came out. Um, and one of the... One of actually the critters that I use all the time is the Manticorb... Um, mm. And that one uh, has, has stripes on it. So I was going to ask about that one actually because I have um, not many options for that, but I have got uh, Meow Motors, 
So Meow okay. Meow is, is a, another arcade racer. Um, got a lot of arcade racers. I think that's because I was doing the racing uh, oh, challenge right. as well this that's year right. from Anico Montoya. Um, normally wouldn't play many racing games. But yeah, Meow Motors is a feline racing game. So all of the characters you play are cats. And a few of them are striped. Now, that's not necessarily maybe a conventionally striped animal like sure. a zebra or zebra uh, or a tiger but does it count when it's uh, just a regular cat that happens to have stripes i mean garfield is a striped cat like it, it's yeah. very distinctive of because it's not like they're necessarily um you know it's 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 a defining characteristic of of certain mm-hmm. animals it's not necessarily like oh there's a a, a variant skin you know that i could have that happens to have stripes on it right like uh, you know, maybe a, a a shooter or something where you you just have a different outfit. Mm-hmm. But I'd say that you know that that's pretty distinctive. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll see. I'll see how far it gets me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think uh, that's most of the ones that I was having. Oh, going back to the letters, um, the letters ones. I just I just remembered. There's one where you've got uh, a game with the letter V twice. So yes. evolve to survive. And again, I have nothing. <laughs> uh, so uh, if you've got any tips on that one, that would... Mine was, uh, you know, yet again, a BCM completion of the month, and it was MX versus ATV Alive. It was an old mm. Game Pass game. Uh, that is not a quick completion. That does require a decent uh, amount of multiplayer grinding, and which I had already done before. And so when I got told to, you know told like i'm being held at gunpoint when i when it was came up as my monthly completion um i just had to do the single player stuff which well, you know again a little challenging but not not terrible mm-hmm. i don't know if you necessarily be able to finish in a month um i very much doubt it but i am seeing now <laughs> that there is one actually i haven't ticked off here that would count which is deer simulator because deer simulator isn't just called deer simulator it's called oh, deer boy, simulator yes. your average everyday Dear game, so average every day have the two V's. So I just finished that this month myself. Possibility. Oh, it's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I thought we weren't supposed to weird. be using crappy games for this. <laughs> it was real weird. You know, though, like uh, that game deserves its weird ratio because I could see mm. so quickly that people bounce off that thing. That is wacky. Yeah, it's like Goat Simulator, but somehow worse. <laughs> right. <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, so yeah. again, on the home stretch here, three left. Hopefully I finish it. Um, you know, it'll it'll well, be a push in December for sure, but color me color me impressed. That's uh, you know, cuz I found this I found I think even even without the non-shovelware rule, I think it was a quite tricky it list. It was a challenging um, list this year, yeah. It was a more challenging sure. list that I found. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, but that's good, you know, it, it's it's it's, pu- it's forced me to pull out some some games, some unusual games, and really think about what I'm playing, uh, which you know, wh- while you're trying to also go for the BCM bonuses and Game Pass completions and all the other silly challenges that we do, uh, it takes some doing to kind of, <laughs> to balance the balance the meta. Uh, yeah, 100%. The things. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but two things good. I'll touch on with that. Uh, so number one um, is... 2023's list right we're talking about next year so as i did last year and i will do it again this year because i love the the, how that plays into it i will announce 2023's list on december 13th so after you get the final 12 days of christmas reveal then the (laughs) next day you will get the fcc reveal um whether or not bcm will happen on the 14th then i don't know i think it did last year but uh, that's the plan. So if you're looking forward to next year's list, uh, that would be there. And oh boy, I totally forgot what the last thing, what the other thing was going to be. Um, you were going to tell me what the whole list was as a teaser. I, I have it. I certainly do have it. I um, whether or not it's more challenging than this year, it's hard to say. Um, I will admit I don't necessarily have, you know, how to do three different, four different um, contests. I don't have contest three planned out just yet. Contest two is is done and good to go, and uh, I will be bringing back the RTDL. um, Mm -hmm. But I don't have the third, 
uh, fourth leg of that chair uh, locked down yet. Mm. So okay, interesting. I, I've given myself now two weeks to figure that out, huh? <laughs> well, I, I find that you know I'm the kind of person that procrastinates and leaves things to the last minute. Uh, hence, doing this segment like at the very end of the year, right? Um, but sometimes that works out for the best. Sometimes the best things are the things that you you know rattle out in the last minute because of the pressure oh. to to make yes. something. Yes. I totally remember what I was going to say, and it's not only semi-related, but uh, in terms of chasing Game Pass completions, i got to get this off my chest, because I, uh, so yeah, I did Deer Simulator uh, this month, and I also finished, uh, what was the other, Space Warlord Trading mm. Simulator? Yeah. Finished those two, and so I was like, oh, you know what, can I get Archvale done in this month? And, you know, that's a pretty, pretty obtainable uh, completion, so I started ripping through that game, and uh, last night, I went to complete the game, and I was right at the end, uh, walked into the final boss dungeon room, climbed the stairs, and immediately it starts a cutscene. And I'm like, oh no, oh my gosh, I don't know, I don't know if I can like continue when I'm done. Um, uh, and so I kind of panicked, and because I still had to do all the crafting, uh, the thirty crafting things. So like, okay, oh, well, I'll just I'll just close this out, reload my save, we'll get back into it. So I went back to town, did all my crafting, came back in. Uh, you know, again, deleting the local save, pulling the cloud save down, those kind of things, um, so that I could restart. Kill the boss, get the boss killing achievement, and I don't have the story based one for building the arch. Ooh. So, what happened? Well, I found on Reddit after a lots of searching that if you interrupt that cutscene at the top of the stairs, you uh, will glitch the game. Oof. And so I now have three days to <laughs> rip through Jeez. that game as fast as possible to try and get back to the end. Um, oh. So that would have been prime clean up mm -hmm. Star Wars time or, you know, uh, doing the Family Mysteries poison game. Uh, but alas, it will, it will elude me. That's Speaking painful. of... The remaining challenges. What? Uh, how did you handle the zombie tropes? That was challenge number two. How'd that go for you? Uh, it's pretty good. I've I've pretty much completed it. I think. Um, although I have actually found it harder than I expected. Mostly because for some reason, the the games that I've been playing this year have been very un combat focused okay uh, so I mean if I include all of the trash games. That's not really the case, and there's a lot of stuff in there. But the kind of the yep. better games have been a lot less kind of shootery, actiony, you know, killing, killing, killing yeah, stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's a bit harder than I expected it would have been uh, to come up with stuff. But, but pretty much, you know, stuff like um, you know the outbreak games. The outbreak games are you know all zombie games, and by oh, completing yeah. most of those, you know, you cover off quite a lot of the kind of standard stuff, especially because they kind of they ape, um, you know, uh, Left for Dead, Resident Evil, that kind of thing. How many you games know. did you do that actually had zombies in them? Um, it's a good question. I'd say maybe f seven or eight, uh, including a lot of trashy ones that have yeah. you know, a lot of zombies in. Um, and some of them four, have zombies like. without them being traditionally even enemies um, necessarily. They're just okay. there in the background. And some of them I would question, you know, it depends what you count as a zombie. Um, some of them aren't necessarily like brain-eating zombies. So one game I completed this month actually is called Boreal Tenebre, which is a very kind of weird Lynchian point-and-click adventure type game. Very, yeah. very weird, very obscure. And it has a sequence where you're in... Um, um, a, a building where all of the workers have been turned into zombies mindless okay. kind of zombies and it's they're not actual zombies it, it's a it's a metaphor <laughs> um <laughs> so you know it's a bit of a stretch but they are there but uh, which works for the bc for the bcm for the fcc category of complete game with zombies but yeah. you have no combat with those zombies so it doesn't work for any of the zombie the challenge ones That's right? funny. because they don't die they don't explode they don't have effects they don't you know yep. none of those things count um they never try to eat you or anything like that yeah uh, they do they I, do moan and groan they do moan and groan so that probably perfect. counts yeah, yeah they're on there groaner uh number 12 
I mm. so like you said, this this is outside of the BCM. So when you open up the uh, you know the trash games, I did end up using four uh, trash games in here. If if I revisited and was like, okay, maybe some of the more recent games that I've completed will fill in those trash holes. I guess if you want to call it, for lack of a better term. Mm. But I finished this list in July. Uh, turns wow. out. As I went through, like, and kind of tick things off the list, um, I do recall, like, some of the last two uh, that kind of were more challenging for me. Uh, the dismemberment one took me finally completing the game Carrion to get that one, which that features lots of dismemberment. So that was a yeah. that was an easy one there. Um, and then humans are the real enemy, uh, the betrayal by a once friendly NPC. And that took mm-hmm. me finishing the game Oxen Free finally um, to to get that one done. So those mm. probably were the harder ones for me. Um, mm-hmm. Which is interesting because that one isn't really zombie based. That's just kind of no. story based. Yeah, right, yeah. right. But it is a zombie trope, of course. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So. Yeah, and um, yeah, for me, dismemberment. Um, I, I was able to use uh, Shell Shock Two which is a terrible old 360 game set in Vietnam, but with zombies in. Um, and yeah, you can kind of bl- blast um, legs and arms and things off in that one. One of the more fun ones that I liked was uh, the Brainless Horde, that completed game that contains swarms of enemies. And I used the game Unravel, where you've got those dumb fly swarms that uh, try to harass you when you're chomping through the, uh, the swamp. Uh, they don't actually mm. kill you. Well, they, I mean, they, they can kill you because they limit your ability to jump, but uh, they're just kind of a nuisance, uh, which I thought was kind of an interesting way to apply that one. And mm-hmm. then uh, one that contains an enemy is so for the Shambler, one that contains an enemy that will trip and fall or stumble while moving. Um, that one I did end up using a trash game, and it was Roombo. First Blood, the uh, Ooh, yeah. R- 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 Roomba killing simulator uh, where yes. the, the bad Fantas. guys slip on the blood all the time. So mm. I, that one was kind of tricky for me to find. And, and as playing that game, it immediately became clear, like, oh, this is this is this one for sure. Yeah, definitely. And that, I actually really enjoyed that game. That was that yeah, was, was a kind fun. of a, tr- uh, a kind of an easy game that actually surprised me. You know, quite. Um, I thought that was kind of well well designed that little totally thing. totally it yeah, was yeah. it was very silly and uh and been pretty quirky and, and fun mm. yeah i kind of cheaped out on the stumbling one i just went with a generic out you know uh outbreak the nightmare chronicles because it has sure. you know very traditional, traditional zombies, zombies and they and they kind of stumble all over the place in that absolutely uh, in a kind of standard resident evil way yeah so mm. i finished that uh how did you do on the multi-genre madness now this is this is a really interesting one because I would say I feel like I've done well considering that I've I don't play loads of genres and actually mm-hmm. as I went through my list and I was working through all of them quite a lot of games that fit into any specific genre are only in that genre. Yes, and they are. There are very few games that have any any other genre associated. So examples being shoot 'em ups yep. beat 'em ups and hack and slashes uh they are for the most part as far as i can tell mostly only ever shoot 'em ups beat 'em ups and hack and slashes or rarely ever anything more than that so there's been a few where i've just been like there is i, I don't have anything yeah. uh fighting games are another one where you know a fighting game is is usually just a fighting game that's it right. there, there there aren't any other genres usually associated to those games i also right. find um that that also applied to action strangely enough uh, that there are options with action but action seems to be a dumping ground <laughs> for genre uh where a game just gets action and that's it an action adventure as well similarly uh it just gets this blanket action adventure genre but but 100% any, any others um but i did pretty well on most of the other ones i've got action rpg adventure a lot of the racing ones i've I've ticked off because they tend to get you know arcade racing sim racing automobile vehicular you know whatever combat as well in some cases first person shooter and 
uh, is you can be combined with other things like stealth. I've got right. Um, let me have a look here. Pa- platformer and Metroidvania is a combo that I did multiple times. Right. Um, point and click and, and adventure similarly. Yep. Um, did you? So of the twenty five hmm. the that were you know tasked of you, how do you have you hmm. totaled it up? How far are you into that twenty five? I've done. 27 so Dang, I just nice. tipped over the edge on that one so it's a close one yeah, yeah i'm stuck at 22 right now um mm. and i don't because I, I didn't play a lot of racing games so i you know mm-hmm. if, if i think if i that, ripped one of those out I do, I do have an automobile in already locked in there and i have mm-hmm. um i believe i have a sim racer done but no arcade racer uh, which you know, I know that one would be on the list. Mm-hmm. There's some other ones, like you said. You know, you kind of took out the ones that were limiting uh, to very few options. But uh, you know, sometimes collection can yes. show up with multiples. Um, real time throws up with a couple, but I, but I hate real time games. So it's like <laughs> it's really yeah. difficult for me in, with the genres that are left because I don't enjoy any of these genres that are left and. Like you said, when you go back through and see what you're completed, you're like, you know, yeah, this is totally the right genre, but like there was stealth elements in that. Come on, you know, or like you're yeah. trying to, <laughs> you know, Just go to the genre it. team yeah. and write. <laughs> definitely, yeah, yeah, it, it was definitely challenging. And a few of them I might even question the validity of them, even still, like, really? Uh, yeah, but it works, you know, it fits, so that's how it ticks it off. I should almost go um, back and look at my completed games this year and see if any of the genres changed. <laughs> because sometimes they sneak up on you and it's like, oh. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely a few of mine did. So a few of my platformer Metroidvania combos um, did did get, did get lose the Metroidvania uh, genre, oh, right. you know, earlier in the year. And because I was following the Vayner challenge as well, you know, Vayner of the Month and all that, I, I was kind of aware of that happening. But if I hadn't been, then I would have missed missed that change. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I'm not sure I'll finish that by the end of the year. We'll see. Again, three away, but that's three multi-genre games. And of the three that I've already told you I want to finish for this FCC, none of those are multi-genre uh, games that apply. So I would need to finish at least six games. Uh, so that, that might be a little challenging for me. The final thing that it will be a challenge is the RTDL crossover. Mm-hmm. You did great on this last year. Um, well, huh, yeah, although... You know, I did have the caveat that I cheesed it somewhat uh, in that sure. there was at least one month last year where I had an almost entirely uh, trash game month <laughs> uh, just to get a, a full combo, which basically kind of just gave me the, the full thing. Although I had done most of it without having done that, right? It, it just yeah. allowed me to finish off the whole list. This year has been a bit more varied, although the last couple of months I have had fairly simple lists overall again that's good um so i am not i'm not making it difficult for myself um so this year so far um i have managed to do 21 of the 25 nice so for for anyone wondering this is where uh you have a random to-do list the challenge that we run um in the community uh where you get given 25 random achievements to achieve that month um the fairly common complaint of that challenge wonderful as it is is that it makes you hop around games and never actually finish them off so this challenge kind of encourages you to say well finish the game in the month that you get it and right. try and finish a game at every single placement uh, throughout the year of that 25 list so if in january you complete a game in place 10 and place 13 then those are ticked off Uh, and then in the next month you might get a seven and a nine and then those get ticked off and you try and complete all of the the different placements so i've done as i say 21 of the 25 i'm missing the 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 kind of hardest two 24 and 25 and then a couple kind of in the middle so maybe the rtdl gods will will smile on me next month sure and i'll be able to knock out 15 and 18 yeah whether i get 24 and 25 done is 
Uh, hey, we'll see. Now, <laughs> we'll to see be fair, <laughs> the the requirement is only to get twenty. So you did I know, fulfill. I know. You did fulfill the because I'm not there yet. I only have sixteen myself. Ooh, um, mm, tricky. So you know, and here's the like I have one, four, and five left. Mm-hmm. So like those could probably be pretty manageable. But then I got to go all the way up to twelve or thirteen, and then some of the later yeah. ones. So it's like I don't know where I'm going to find those four. And again, it, it like you said, it's the RTDL gods. So whether or not that's going to be manageable mm-hmm. in a month or, or so, I'm, I'm not sure about uh, finishing this one. And this has always been tough for me because typically the my my gaming is pretty limited. So um, the unfortunate side effect of completing games is that my RTDL output every month is woefully underperforming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I try and do as much kind of stacking as possible with the various challenges um so i try and populate my rtdl collection that gets pulled with games that kind of line up with whatever other challenges are running that month and also games that are broadly completable um so i have a lot of stuff in there that i think well if it came up i can probably get that completion if i push for it Right. Um, so I, I don't I don't stress it too much, and I try and get like three or four done each month just to kind of spread it out at least. Um, how so, do you set like how many? Do you know how many games and achievements you have in your ITDL um, like open to you? So I I know exactly how many achievements I have open to me because uh, this year uh myself and about a dozen other people in the community i can say this oh now. It was, you're it was doing a the secret, big one yeah. we had a secret side challenge going on just as a small like uh subgroup uh where we were doing scavenger uh and we were just doing with within the kind of sort of i think it was about 10 of us uh, we had a little, you know, side gig going on where we were challenging how, how much, who can get the most score in the year in Scavenger. And the caveat there was that you had to have a minimum pool of 5,000 achievements available okay. so that you couldn't get, you know, game it too much, basically. Um, right. So I have pretty much consistently throughout the year maintained around 5,000 achievements to pull from. But a lot of that is with easier games sure i have to have at least 50 1.2s obviously for bcm and actually i think i have around 100 available so it's not like it's all easy stuff but right it's definitely weighted that way i always find my list comes out in terms of the score you know that the, the rtdl you know max possible score for that month on the very low side compared to some people's who right. you know, populate it with 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 harder harder stuff yeah. And mine are mine's typically the other way is they are very heavily loaded sort because my initiative this year was to really focus on cleaning up those those little stragglers you know the games that have one or two that you've kind of left and said oh yeah I'll get to that sometime um, and so I'm really focusing on you know looking at my game collection and getting that first page of completions you know off the board there and saying okay listen if one achievement left like. Are you going to go for it or not? And if you're not, retire it. Like, don't pretend like you're going to ever go back and finish this game on hard or or whatever. And yeah. and so that has really caused a lot of like challenging months for me to try and finish because I set aside those those really difficult ones. Um, and you know, I, I'm still going to focus on that. So I, I keep it around 2,500 achievements, uh, and that's spread across 150, 140 games. Um, mm. It it would probably come as no surprise that I also track kind of what the percentages of getting those games um, on my list are, you know. And so when you get those single achievements, it it's like a fraction of a percent that that's even possible Mm. to show up. And so, Mm. you know, at that point, it's like it is destiny that you should go and finish this. Like, you know, the fact that this individual thing got pulled you should go and, and really focus on that. And if you don't at that point, what are you waiting for? Uh, so that's always been tough from the RTDL That's standpoint. a good point. Because I had that last year when Fable 3 turned up in mine. I, I'd completed Fable 3 apart from the glitched 
demon door one yeah, yep, yep. Um, which i think is kind of notoriously glitched and it glitched for me uh so i just kind of put it down and thought well i'm never going to go back to that unless something makes me and then last year it popped up in rtdl and i was like well the the gods have decided now is the time <laughs> that's right uh, you know years later uh and i went and, and i just did a speed run of the game and, and got it without much stress so uh, yeah like it would have been a very low chance of that appearing so yep uh, i think I, i've got i think i've got maybe 10 to 12 games like that where all that is left is a single hard run achievement i think things like darksiders and brutal legend and stuff right. like that where uh, i i kind of think well I, I i don't want to but if something makes me i will uh, so those are still in my pool un- sure. uh, unless unless i think i can't do it uh, right. so spec ops is one where i don't think i can do the hard mode i don't have the <laughs> skills so that is not in the pool <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I, yeah, I've been pulling mine off, you know, as we had talked about it in a previous conversation about the retirement age. And yeah, so if if there's a few of those left, and it's, I mentioned it in the last mm-hmm. podcast I was on where I said, I'm not going to do limbo. I'm not going to do the five deaths run. Like that's exactly, exactly. That's not fun. That's not fun for me. I, I've, I've gotten my enjoyment out of that game. So I'm not going to go back to it. That's retired. But, you know, if, if it's a DLC that came out after I completed it, it's like, oh, okay, well, I should go experience the DLC. And if I do, I might as well finish it. Yeah, which is interesting because this year now that has become an option for us as well because it's possible for DLC achievements to get pulled in RTDL. So yep. that has kind of been an extra motivating factor to go and complete games that, yeah, like you say, the DLC was the thing that was left hanging and, and now you kind of go back and, and finish it off. Yeah, yeah historically I always kept a, a bounty board open you know, where those achievements just were never available right it just they would never get pulled because their title updates are dlc and mm-hmm. since spaceman put that in there it is awesome that they're now open up to getting pulled because now it's those things that i thought i'd never get to are now mm-hmm. maybe going to show up absolutely yeah great uh yeah so again this has been a really enjoyable thing uh it's been great to kind of keep track of throughout the year uh alongside everything else that we do um if anyone has been doing any of these uh then feel free to kind of share them on the discord we mostly chat about contests in the ahl channel which you may need to opt into otherwise you know podcast discussion for for chat around this segment obviously is, is another place to kind of talk about it you've mentioned obviously you're bringing back the categories you're bringing back rtdl you're not sure about the third one yep but you uh, could you tease us a bit about your second challenge maybe? i can you got that i out? can it is yeah so i'm calling it mr popular mm. all right and i i'll read you the it's because because there's some options here that 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 play into it, but I'll read you the interesting paragraph. This challenge asks you to complete in game, inspired by, or completely stealing from big franchises. So you can so there's some connections that you can make toward these very big popular franchises that are out there, and you're trying to find games that have a connecting thread. And I've provided a two options for each game that you can go for. So I'll give you one example here. Uh, Halo, uh, right? That's that's a giant Microsoft franchise. So I'm you not can, familiar. I, yeah, you can either complete a game that has Space Marines in it, or complete a game where your character has a regenerating shield. Right. And so yes. there are. Uh, 130, did I do 30? I did 30 different franchises with a couple of options for each. Um, and wow. I guess those who are seriously, uh, you know, uh, looking for some fun, they will go ahead and try to do all, I guess, 60 then, but, mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. So I have a, I have a question on that one. It sounds like a really interesting challenge and quite cool to kind of think about how games kind of connect to each other yeah is it legitimate for you to complete a game that was actually made prior to the one being 
quote unquote referenced. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I I would imagine there is. Um, you know, and again, I have created what I believe these franchises, uh, you know, mm. connective tissue is. Um, you know, so there's been games with Space Marines forever, but I feel like yes. Halo was the one that really solidified it in you know as that's the Space Marine franchise, right mm-hmm. now. I know the game Marathon, right? That inspired Destiny that, you know, likely, you know, it's old enough where it could be back in that Halo time. And uh, even PlayStation 2 had Space Marines galore. Uh, But this is more of a, right, this is one of the the crowning pieces of that. If if you see a modern game with Space Marines, you're going to either think Destiny or Halo um, as, as its predecessor. And or that's kind Warhammer of where those, these Marines. things come from. <laughs> no, or, or Warhammer 40k Space Marine. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, there you go. So, so they may not necessarily be um, the originator of these, you know, gameplay or uh, these mechanics or ideas, but uh, they're there. They're there. And so, uh, we'll see. Well, I'm, I'm excited to see what people think and, mm-hmm. and how this uh, how this plays into it. Definitely. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing the list and kind of what the options are there and start planning those things out. Um, That's right. As, as we as we usually said, the planning and the, the, the filling out of the lists is almost more fun than the playing of the games. Love getting my spreadsheet going each year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Which I do think we should then, and we're going to say this, I'm going to put it out there, once, you know, maybe at the end of the year, uh, we start talking about the upcoming list, maybe during the countdown uh, to the New Year sales during that time frame when we, we get to break down uh, what the 2023 list looks like. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. You're- yeah, we should definitely uh, come back and look at that, those options and maybe think about some of the games that would fit on some of those kind of hints and tips. Love that. Um, now I also know you've been busy with one of our other kind of favorite community events, uh, on TA, the 12 days of Christmas. So we've got that to That's right. to as well. And yeah, I think we're going to end the year in style there. Definitely. Um, so I'm looking forward to basically a December packed full of community challenge, <laughs> you know, fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, as oh, as yeah. people kind of scramble to finish up their BCM bonuses including the FCC stuff, 12 days of Christmas, and then wrapping up anything else that we're doing, uh, as well as I, I'm going to say now, it may have already been announced by the time this comes out, um, we're going to be doing another backlog challenge for December in, in AHL just to kind of wrap the year up, off with a bow uh, to try and encourage people to complete those old old games on the tags that are just sitting around. Uh, Love it. to be completed, yeah. Yeah, December is always a good time, I think, to just focus on the backlog, clear out, clear out, start fresh, as or as fresh 100%. as it's possible to do on our <laughs> very messy tags. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I I'm looking forward to it. Love this uh, this stuff. Love this time of year. Uh, it'll be it'll be lots of fun. Fantastic. Well, uh, thanks again for joining me, uh, Freem. Uh, I, I, I would try and commit next year to it being more regular. Uh, we'll have to see because uh, it's always nice chatting with you about this stuff. Love it. Yeah, appreciate it, Chewy. Thanks for your time. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to all you guys in the Discord. See ya. See ya.